you're zooming in, raise your hand and Jody will call on you once we get through the people that are here in the meeting in actual attendance. All right, starting, is there anyone on the front row that has a comment on this issue? Thanks, Dennis. Will you please announce your name clearly for the minute? Yes. Oh, hold on, we're going to put a mic on for you. Sorry. We're still trying to figure this all out. Hello, hello, hello. <laughs> Eber City, Far West and Park City have been cited as cities that allow private gates on public roads. I called the cities, found out this isn't true, and I'd like to read the response from Park City. This is from their city engineer, quote, Dennis, as the city engineer responsible for all right-of-way infrastructure, a private gate across the public road is not allowed in Park City. Also, since I've been here for 18 months, I confirmed with our public works department that we have not any private gates over a public road in town that may have gotten approved years ago during the Wild West times. There are gates in town for private developments, but those are within privately maintained areas. John Robertson, public engineer, close quote. Utah Code 72-5 says, quote, an individual who knowingly places or authorizes the placement of a temporary or permanent barricade on a class A, B, C, or D road right away or a portion of a class A, B, C, or D road uh, right away uh, permanently or temporarily close the road or right away vehicular traffic is guilty of a class C misdemeanor, close quote. A, B, C, or D codes, we follow under C. And I quote section 72-3-104. It says, quote, City streets are class C roads, close quote. Seconds. As I interpret this, right now we're in violation of that section of the law. Um, also, right now the gates violate code D, fire code D1035, which states, and I quote, construction of gates shall be of materials that allow manual operation by one person. Close quote. I got stuck behind the gates. I okay. can't push those gates over. Fine. Okay. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks, Deb. All right. Anybody else on the front row that has come? Please come. Do I need to announce my name? Uh, yes. Yeah. Okay. yes. My name's Ken Jones. I live a couple of streets over from Summit Creek Drive. Uh, you answered already a lot of questions. I had already mayor, so that's good. But I do have, I'm generally opposed to the gates. But based upon what I think is common sense, there shouldn't be a, a restrictions on a public road, either speed bumps or gates or anything else. It's just kind of a general axiom. But I do have a question that perhaps be considered by the council either now or some future time. I've got a, a map here of Summit Creek and it's very nice development. Uh, I'm glad that they're neighbors. Uh, but there's a there's a road uh, loafer drive that's going to be eventually extended over and will meet uh, Summit Creek. So is there any consideration that if a gates were approved, would also a gate be installed where a loafer connects with Summit Creek Drive? And if not, it would, if it would not ever be approved, uh, then it would be illogical to think that one would be approved anyplace else since it's all intra-city and they're all connected. So that is It has been proposed. Okay, that is uh, something like to hear resolution about that and the logic behind it. So that's all my comments. Okay, okay. Thank, thank you, you very you. much. Appreciate that. All right. I'm Lori Lisenby. Um, with all due respect to my Summit Creek neighbors, I'm opposed to gates. Um, a private barrier on a Utah public city street is a Class C misdemeanor in HB 179 signed by the governor in 2019. The gates are a barrier on one of only two emergency exits in a high fire risk city. In April, my husband was screaming in pain as I drove him to Mountain View 
ER. He's okay now. Um, the gates were open. Imagine if they had malfunction and I had to back up, turn around, and go down Woodland Hills Drive, making the 10 minute the drive 10 minutes longer. It was a wake up call to me of the danger of private barriers on the quickest route to the nearest hospital. On May 17th, my husband was stuck at the gate for six or seven minutes. Ambulance or fire trucks could be delayed at a malfunctioning gate. Phoning in for a gate to be open could literally r result in loss of life. What about when you forget your phone or your phone battery is dead and snow and ice can also deactivate the trigger? In all of our research confirmed by Utah County sheriffs, there are no private gates on public roads in Utah or in the United States. A quick internet search reveals many damages from HOA gates. They are a lawsuit waiting to happen in costs to the city for vehicle damage or far worse, bodily injury. A council member told me that seconds. would never happen. I looked in a different crystal ball that agrees with Becker law of the Florida condo and HOA laws that says, quote, it is almost inevitable that there will be lawsuits as to responsibility for damage to a vehicle, unquote. Those lawsuits will be against this city and their first argument will be that the city has liability because illegal gates were in violation of county, state and federal codes. A council member asked me, how would you feel if you bought a house thinking it would be zoned for something and then it wasn't? I said that has happened to us because we bought with the expectation we would have two emergency exits out of our city. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. All right. Anybody on the second row? Brad. Uh, Brad Merritt. Um, I believe Doral's already given all, uh, all of you a copy of the, my written comments uh, that I made, so I'm not going to go over those again. Uh, I'll just state that in those written comments uh, to the mayor and the city council, I clearly established, due to my 36-year law enforcement career, that the gates have no effect whatsoever on the speed that vehicles travel on Summit Creek, nor on any criminal or suspicious activity. Um, however, uh, in, additionally, in making your decision, I would ask that, uh, the, that you would consider this question. And that question is, what benefit do the gates provide to the city of Woodland Hills? What is the benefit to the community? What is the benefit to those of us that live in Woodland Hills of these gates? And I think if you answer that question honestly and objectively, you'll come to the conclusion they don't provide any benefit to the city of Woodland Hills or to any of our community members. They're not a crime deterrent and they do not prevent people from speeding up and down Summit Creek. Both of those are the responsibility of the Sheriff's Department, not the Summit Creek HOA, not the Summit Creek developers, and not you as city officials of Woodland Hills. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so anybody else that has a comment? Wait a second. Sorry, I have post-COVID COPD, so I may put out. And I'm not going to read what I wrote, but I agree with what benefit do the gates pose? Um, and I've had people tell me they raised the value of your home. And I'm going to say no, because our Salem home much more high, raised higher value than our Willen Hills home during the last two years. So I don't buy that it was the gates of Summit Creek. Um, and I, mine is a safety issue. I might get stuck like they did, trying to get home to put a trach back in my daughter's throat. I tried to train the um, Wilden Hills Fire Department. They weren't prepared to be trained. So it's up to me and my husband. And the extra minute does make a difference. And an extra 10 minutes could be death. There are so many other reasons. I just don't think that we benefit as a community. I would love to have all of Wilden Hills gated. I really would. I'm so sick of you know all the crime that has been coming up lately. But that's not the answer. Thanks. Thank you. Okay, second row, anybody else? Third row. Uh, 
new residents within the last year to Woodland Hills. Um, I'll, I'll make it short and sweet. I've already submitted my objections to the gates and the community by email. Uh, I think from a legality standpoint, I guess that hasn't been resolved. I hear, I hear two different stories here this evening. Uh, and from a litigation standpoint, I don't think that has been really thought through as well. I think there's a lot of circumstances where people could be put under as uh, has been stated tonight, but there are situations where their travel has been impeded for one reason or another in an emergency. So uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Hey, third row, do you have a comment? Yeah. Oh, go ahead, sorry. <clears throat> What's up? Craig Sackett. Uh, I don't think I've heard anybody address the point of maintenance and the ability to, are we going to be maintaining the snow removal on these roads? Have these roads been uh, <clears throat> installed by city expenses or have they been uh, all incurred by the developer? These are questions that I have. Um, I understand that the installation of the mechanisms to allow the gates to open and close had to be uh, overseen by a city employee. And with all the resources that we have or don't have, should that be included in it? So I, I'm not really sure that we are addressing that part of it yet. I'd like to hear more on that. Thank you. I believe the agreement that is still in, in tact with the developers and with the Summit Creek development is that the gates stay open during snow season altogether because we can't plow through those gates. So through the closed gates. So just to answer that question. All right. Anybody else? Third row. Okay. Fourth row. Thanks, Jacob Broner. I want to register my uh, vote against the gates. Uh, not every emergency is going to require a fire truck or a siren or something of that nature. It could be an individual driving somebody down using that, and they would lose you or lose valuable time waiting for the gates to open. I think it's a safety issue. Number one. Number two. It's a public. As a council, we should be looking towards the good of the public. And the public interest, I think, is if we're going to gate any of the things, we should gate them all. And if we're not going to gate them all, then we should gate none of them. Because it, the public interest of the general city as a whole, um, I think it is a, a detriment <laughs> to the public. Okay, And I wouldn't advocate to gate any of the public streets. I don't think it's a wise way to go about things. We have a residence in a private development that's a gated community, and um, it doesn't stop anybody from getting in or out. If they want to get in, they can get in. So it doesn't stop crime. It doesn't stop people from speeding or anything right. else. All it is is it's a kind of a status thing, and I think that's what it is, is it's more of a status thing for people on Summit Creek. And granted, I think they were sold a bill of goods that they should have never been sold. And I feel like they have seconds. some interest in it. But I, I just don't <laughs> think a gate is an appropriate way to do it. And that's my mind. Thank you. Thanks. Okay, anybody else? Joan? Oh, okay. <laughs> I just don't want to skip anybody. Joan Rohner. Um, I too don't feel like, I feel like there's a, a safety issue there. I had to go to the hospital thinking I was having a heart attack about a year ago and the gates were fortunately open. And I think, and my husband, we've gone down that road with blood clots in his lungs. And I think that's, you know, unnecessary <laughs> to have the gates there. I know I don't think it stops speeding. It doesn't stop me from going a different speed. Maybe when I get to the gate and to the next one, but I don't think it stops speeding either. So I think that's a poor argument. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. Okay, back row, anybody? 
I think it's our mostly our city employees and our deputies. So, all right. Um, oh, did you have a comment? Well, anything I would have brought up in the Okay, thanks. All right, we are going to move to the to Zoom. Um, attendees that have their hands raised. I would like to just say before we do that, uh, uh, I really appreciate all the comments we've received so far. We've got people with differing opinions, but you've been um, civil and um, and reasonable, and it's very helpful to us to hear these comments. I, we They're all very appreciated. And so hopefully we can keep that kind of discourse up. Jody? Uh, I was going to do John Chamberlain, but I can't find where he went. Okay, we'll try uh, Alan Lee's. Mute. Sorry, I'm trying to trying to get the system working here. Understood. Can you hear me? Okay. Yes. Yeah. So I guess my you know, you know my state in regards to this is that you know we've monitored this for a couple of weeks while the gates were open you know the residents up here and i guess i would disagree a little bit we're seeing definitely less traffic slower traffic people more concerned than it is a community so you know i would say that you know the gates do help in that way um the, the other thing is is when we bought here in summit creek obviously all of the residents here bought what they considered a gated community at least to the point where the gates were operational even though you know even though everybody that drives up to them can get in that's what we thought we bought and um so i guess my question is is that that you know when we did our due diligence and review of buying here, it showed a preliminary plat, which my understanding as a developer myself is a legal document that basically was signed by the city and then the construction of the gates were overseen by the city. To me, that means that, that those operational gates were accepted by the city. So I guess that's all I've got to say in regards to that. Um, you know, I would like comment on that. Thank you. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and mute myself at this point, unless you have a question. Okay, so, but Mayor, yes. I think it would be okay for you to let him know that we won't comment on that right now, okay. but it, it's a point. Okay, yeah, we're not, we're not gonna comment on on a lot of these points now, but we, we're noting your points and they will be discussed. So, but right now we're just taking public comment. John Chamberlain is back. Okay, hey, John Chamberlain will be next. There, there you know, now can you hear me? We can hear you. Okay. I appreciate the opportunity to say a few words. Um, I wasn't completely sold on the gates when I moved in, uh, but I will tell you after having them closed up for the last you know, little bit, last few weeks, I really come to enjoy the gates. It gives you a, maybe a false sense of security, but a, a sense of security. And, and my wife and I have really enjoyed having them there. So uh, my vote is love to keep them open and, and, uh, and have it be a part of the city. So thank you. All right, thank you. Next up, uh, Chris Crow. Okay, next, Chris Crow. All right, hi everybody. Um, I live right on Summit Creek Drive and uh, my wife and I purchased almost three years ago uh, before the fire, we, we purchased uh, a home in a gated community. That's what was presented to us. And my wife and I did that for a number of reasons, but in, in, including security, and the other re reason had to do with um, just the home values. Um, so in my professional space, I've transacted over a, a billion dollars worth of real estate in our nation. And I'll just tell you as a leading expert that um, gates 
were a factor in the price that we paid for our home and the prices that these homes are sold for, there is a multiple six figure bump in value because of that. So whether someone wants to argue it's a status symbol, it was certainly part of our, our, our buying choice, but it's also really about the security for, for two points. Um, the first one is we know what it feels like to be vandalized and to have things stolen from us and um, the gates do something different. Since the gates have been functional, two things have happened. One, I've been behind cars that are actually stopping and turning around at the lower gates. I've seen that happen on two occasions in the last week, which means that there's non-residents that are no longer going up into the city those particular ways. Um, but for, for me, the really big part is just what has happened since the gates became functional recently. Again, we enjoyed the exact same thing that we enjoyed when we first moved here, which is when cars go through those gates, they think I'm now in a neighborhood and they do drive differently. I promise you, I don't care what the studies or the whatever sites, it is amazing. Me and my family are walking on the road again and we weren't doing that before because it was NASCAR highway. And so, you know, there's a huge safety element and it's just been, it, it's made a big difference for me and my family and it verifies the original choice that we made when we purchased and we came out here. Um, so we are in favor of, of keeping the gates for the security and also for uh, the reduced crime that we believe this has an impact on. Okay, thank you. I forgot to see your second thing, but you made it exactly right. All right, Jody, next. We're getting an echo and I'm not sure why. So if we can... Hi, yeah, this is Kalen Crone. Um, I want to echo some of the things Chris said, but I just wanted to ask um, the council that um, the residents of Summit Creek, especially the people right on Summit Creek Drive, um, probably experience firsthand the reality of the difference between the gates open and the gates shut. So the people, I just wanna say like lovingly to everyone else in Woodland Hills, the people in this community of Summit Creek are the ones that see it. So I hope you guys will really, really feel and, and hear the testimony of the people that are right here visually seeing the traffic is less. It is way less this last month. Um, I've really enjoyed having the gates um, definitely feeling safer, definitely feeling like it's a protected space. Um, that's my favorite thing about it. Um, but I, I really do see less cars and also cars that go slower. I have also personally seen separate from Chris, um, people who obviously don't belong, turn around at the gate and leave again. Um, so that's what I have to say tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Steve Dicker wanted to make a comment. Steve Dicker. Yeah, I don't have any comments this evening. Okay, sorry, sorry. Grace. Uh, ben Brindley. Ben Brindley is next. Yeah. Hey, thank you, Jody. And I just wanted to, uh, there's a lot of things that are, have been said and will be said. I just wanted to take a minute and just thank um, Doral and, and Craig, especially for the help as we got these gates operating and tested and made sure that they worked properly. Um, it took a little bit of time and we appreciated their patience. I am in favor of the gates, you know, having them operate. Uh, we think that they provide a lot of benefit for the residents in Summit Creek. And I, we look forward to the continued conversation and coming to the resolution on these. And uh, thank you. Gay Phillips. Gay Phillips. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. 
I just want you to know um, that I've really appreciated having the gates closed. I came from a gated community and I totally expected to be in a gated community here. Can I interrupt you for just a second, ask you to state your name clearly for our minutes? Gay Phillips Gay. Thank you. Thank you. So I came from a gated community and, I'm, and I am, I've expected to be here in a gated community, but I too live on Summit Creek Drive and the traffic has been slower. And I, I feel that it did make a difference. So I would appreciate you considering the needs of us that live here. And I love living in Woodland Hills. I'm so grateful to be here, but I really do like having the gates closed. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. There's no one else. No one else. Okay. okay. See, no one else has their hand raised. I'll give you like five seconds for somebody else to raise their hand if you want to speak, because we want to make sure we don't miss anybody. These comments are. Bucky has his hand raised. Bucky. 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 Bucky gay. Muted. Yeah, Buck, you're muted. It wouldn't let me unmute myself, so. Okay. Sure. Oh. Uh, <laughs> now we can see you. You look really happy. But we don't hear anything yet. Can you hear me now? No, nope, we can't hear you. You don't look muted, but we still can't hear you. Hmm. It's like your mic may not be working. Yeah. Oh. I'm not sure. Oh, there, we can hear you now. Oh, you can? Works now. Um, I just wanted to say that we appreciate the city uh, working with us and trying to resolve this issue. And um, uh, we have checked with our attorney who is a very good um, attorney and knows the law very well. And he's confirmed that there, it's not illegal to have these gates across a public road. And, um, you know, we're open to solutions and continuing to collaborate with the city. I mean, we would be willing to take the road would be willing to buy the road back from the city if that was or or any other ways to resolve this um i spend a lot of time at summit creek and i too would like to add to the many people who have said already the gate traffic and reduce the amount of traffic and it's a much more pleasant experience on the road when those gates are closed and um we appreciate the city's help and, and look forward to resolving this with you guys. Okay, I see somebody named Reed, <laughs> but I only see your first name. We'll give you your chance if you'd like to speak. We see that you're connecting, here you go. Okay, now you're muted. Need you to unmute on the, your Zoom. There we go. There you go. Okay. Okay, okay. There, we can hear you now. Lots of echo. I'm gonna move. Um, we live on Summit Creek Drive down near the bottom. And your we have seen a difference. Minutes, please. Pardon? Full name anyway, for we've seen a difference in the, the speed, although it hasn't completely, you know, gone to an acceptable level. Um, it's 30 miles an hour, and I saw a car go by at least 60 miles an hour. I was going to chase him down. Um, but, and we've, there was particular cars that we keep an eye on before the gates were operational, and 
they would speed a lot. So we have seen a difference and it still can be better. And like others, the community that we feel here with the gates uh, being closed and operational is very important. So we're just concurring with what others have said in Summit Creek. And we love, you know, we're a part of Woodland Hills and we hope that, you know, everyone realizes that, that we're all part of the same city. So uh, I think that's all I have to say. You know, I may be in favor of the top gate being open like it has been for a few days, but the bottom gate certainly is important. So thank you. Patrice Jentz. We, there we go. There. We can hear mm -hmm. you now. Great. Okay. Um, yes, I live on uh, Summit Creek Drive, and um, I'm not tucked away in the back where it's nice and safe. I'm right here. <laughs> and it's just, it's disconcerting when there's so many cars coming up. Um, when we first looked to move up here, when we came up here and the gates were operational, I was kind of hesitant to come up because I thought, well, this is a gated community. And, um, you know, my son-in-law assured me that it was okay to come up, but I feel more secure. I feel safer having the gates just because of uh, the speed of cars. I know when I go through the gates, it does, it, it sets a, a mood or it, it tells me that I'm entering a gated community. I'm entering a community. And uh, without those gates, um, I think people would just go speeding through as they had before. And I, I appreciate the council. You've spent a lot of time reviewing this and I appreciate that time. And um, I just wanna say that I am for the gates uh, being operational. And um, someone brought up before something about snow. And I know that um, I think someone said that uh, they leave them open in the winter. And also I think they're heated so that there's not ice and snow that um, stay there. I may be wrong with that, but that's what I was told. So I think every, everything has been taken in um, to consideration to make those the safest gates um, possible and I appreciate that they would remain operational. Thanks. All right, Jody, do you see anybody else? Okay. Um, all right, hearing no further comment, I will close. Um, our public input on the, these gates. Again, we really appreciate everybody's comments, giving us good food for thought and good um, input. Um, the next item on our work session agenda is the report and recommendations following the Planning Commission public hearing. Wayne? The Planning Commission met uh, late yesterday night and uh, Wait, yeah, start again. Planning Commission met Wednesday night. We had a public hearing at the beginning of our meeting to uh, review a number of things and get public comment uh, uh, on a few items. Um, most of them pertain to the um, building height ordinance and uh, having some uh, clarification made by way of definitions. And uh, we looked at... Uh, finished grade definition that the city currently has and how that could be changed to uh, better address the uh, building height ordinance. Uh, within the ordinance itself, we, we talk about finished grade points. So we look towards a definition of that. Uh, we wonder about changing the natural grade uh, definition. We decided to keep that as it is and uh, we did uh, look at the natural grade reference line 
which is a term used in the uh, new building height ordinance. So we uh, approved uh, a revised grade finish definition uh, for it's in your packet, but let me just for the benefit of everybody listening here and I'll, I'll share it. It states the elevation of the finished surface of the ground adjoining the building after final grading. If used to measure building height, a plane created by the highest and lowest finished grade points would be projected throughout the entire footprint of the structure. Uh, on finished grade points, uh, we define that as elevation points adjoining the structure after final grading. As I mentioned, we kept final, or the natural grade as it is. However, a natural grade reference line, which is new, uh, we define that as a reference line created from the highest point of the natural grade in the perimeter of the building to the lowest point on the perimeter of the building, which is projected through the entire footprint of the structure. We try to keep the wording uh, similar to that that's used in the ordinance. So it didn't create another possible ambiguity, uh, but directing it back into the wording of the ordinance. We felt those uh, changing those areas, modifying them, will help uh, add to the ordinance and uh, give further uh, meaning to how the building height will be measured using that terminology within the ordinance. On, on those areas, uh, we are recommending the City Council adopt those. You will need to have a, a public hearing. And I've talked to Jody about scheduling that to, in July, uh, one of your meetings there to take further public input. We, uh, there are only two people zoomed into our meeting, uh, public-wise, and neither of them had any comments. We did get a couple of letters. And uh, the letters <coughs> purposely did not uh, put the wording out in advance. We didn't know what wording we wanted. We were looking for the public to help us formulate if they wanted to do so, uh, the, the wording that we would take and use. Uh, so the two letters we got were critical of that process. They felt that we should have the wording in advance to put out there. Our view was, let's see what the public wants to, uh, if there's any structure that the public wants to give to it, and uh, we would take that into consideration. You will have, you have the wording, so there will be the wording out there at the time of your public hearing, if people have an issue with, uh, with the way that we have crafted that uh, before it potentially will be approved. So I just wanted to share that, share that with you. Um, we also um, considered changing the sport court uh, setback. Uh, the definition, the, the setback for sport courts right now, uh, which involve tennis court, pickleball court, basketball court, uh, they have to meet setbacks of, a, of a, a regular residential building. We've had a number of complaints. When you're looking at uh, maybe an R119 lot, there's maybe not enough room on there for somebody to have a sport court because it has to have the same setback as the structure on there. So we talked about that and we, uh, we modified that to have the same setback as an accessory building for a sport court. So that too would be our recommendation to you to adopt that change in our ordinance to use the uh, uh, accessory building setback for sport courts. And that too would be subject of a public hearing for, uh, for input, for added input. Um, there was one other, let's see, there's a couple of areas I'll, that I'll, I'll come to in the agenda later on. Um, there was one a recommendation that we may, received from the fire chief to um, bring into uh, conformity part of our fire ordinance 
bring it in conformity with the state statute and as well to clarify when sprinkler systems are uh, need to be installed in a home. Uh, not sure that's a land use, but we've gone through the land use process, uh, public hearing and review, and we'll probably put that, recommend to consider that in the future public hearing as well. Uh, again, that recommendation comes from the <laughs> chief. Part of it was to sink our sprinkler ordinance with the state ordinance, and the other part was to clarify uh, when uh, a home or a structure needed to be uh, sprinkled. Basically, it's heated, it needs to be sprinkled. So, those were the items that we had in, as well as what I'll ask later on with, the, uh, with our meeting. Yeah, can I ask a question, Wayne? Sure. Um, regarding natural grade, and I, I'm just interested in what, if any, influence does the existing uh, pre-developed lot have on the natural grade? You say pre-developed. Are you talking about a kind of a flat lot, not hilly? Or... Well, I'm, I'm purposely using the pre-developed before it gets disturbed by the homeowner doing any kind of grading. Okay. It's so, part of a subdivision. So it's a it's subdivision, there. and whatever the subdivider did, they did. But now you've got a home builder who's deciding, hey, I'm going to build a home here. How does natural grade come into play with what was there before the home builder came in? Um, the home builder is going to be required to provide topographical detail for that lot. And that's available. So if there's something that got disturbed by the subdivider in designing that lot, it will go back to what the natural grade was per these topographical uh, maps. And that detail, topographical lines, are provided with a site plan so that the city knows what the natural grade was before there was any disturbance to that. Okay, so you say what the natural grade was. The question I have is, isn't that what the natural grade is? Is the topographical map that, was, that existed before that's what it should be. And, and so I guess... goes in there with a, with a grader or something and does something to disturb that, that the natural grade is still... Whatever it whatever was. Whatever it was before any excavation or land. So I'm just curious, why don't we use that as our definition? We, we do. Okay, we I, haven't, I haven't read it, so... Okay, we kept it, and I don't, I don't have it here, but it, it does say that it is the... Um, grade before any land disturbance or excavation. That's okay. So in essence, it's the topographical. Maybe we should add text that says, according to the um, registered topographical map or, you know, whatever we need to add there so that it, it makes it very clear that it's, it's the topographical map that is the standard, not whatever you might I understand. Come up with the site plans that we've been reviewing. They're done by an architect and oftentimes an engineer, and they know. So there's there that has never been kind of called that has never been called into question. What's the natural grade? They know what that natural grade is. So they know what that definition means. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We haven't had any issues with that in our knowledge. The the other thing is is this there was at least. There was one definition that we were talking about that Ted Mickelson said that he'd showed to some engineers and none of them had any That was generally confusion. the building height calculation. Okay, all right. Okay, yeah. thank you. Okay, so, so based I'll on these other track this. The, the, and I feel, like, I feel like I'm repeating what has been said many, many times, but it's kind of interesting, you know, at this point I'm kind of used to the criticism but it's still hard to hear citizens criticize us for not being open and not allowing input. And then those same voices criticizing us because we don't have the language figured out before the meeting. It's like, you got to pick one or the other. You can't, you can't do both. And so I think the important thing to realize is that the way that the planning commission works and the city council works is if there's an issue, 
we may individually, we may come up with what we think is a good idea, but always, 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 it is then presented in a public meeting where we're willing to listen to, we're willing to have it attacked, we're willing to have language changed. And all of that happens during the meeting. It's, it's the way we have to work by law. So I think, you know, those that get upset because they don't like how you do things, well, I don't know how to help them because that's the process and it's the way it should be. So I think, I think that's important to say and I just thank you for your work and the Planning Commission's work. Yeah. I, I have a question, Wayne. It's kind of uh, a little bit different on this, uh, but who is the intended audience of these, uh, uh, let, let's use the building height ordinance. Who is, who's the, who is that written for? Is it written for a designer? Is it written for a layperson? Uh, who is, you know, I'm, I, there, there may be a hierarchy there, but, but who is really the, the primary stakeholder that we want to make sure understands that? Well, it's kind of, it's, it's several people. Primarily, the architect who's designing that home. He needs to be familiar with the city's building code. What's the height of allowable building mm -hmm. in the city? What are the loads that, that, that the city requires for snow loads, et cetera? Now, some of that, an engineer then is going to come into play. Uh, an architect may have some background to do that, but we're looking for an engineer staff oftentimes on these plans, and that's what Corbett looks at a lot, the structural soundness of those plans as stamped by an engineer who is certifying that these plans will meet the, the structural requirements that you have in the city. The, the homeowner, he's going to present his ideas to the architect who's going to draw this home. So the homeowner has to have an understanding, but that architect will be helping him understand. Because he's, the homeowner's a layperson. He doesn't come in with plans that, I'm Joe Schmo, and I just have these plans for you. Right. An architect has drawn them. So the architect, I think, is critical to understanding that mm -hmm. the detail and the description, not only in, in the height of a home, but in other aspects of that site plan also. So, so if I were to rephrase that, I would say that our primary audience is the, or are the, well, maybe it's is, is the uh, designer, the architect, uh, and the engineer it then becomes their responsibility to make sure that the uh, vision, the goals of, of the homeowner are, are met in, uh, in what, what, what they want, but also meeting the requirements of the city. So, so, so then the, the resident is probably third on the list of, of who this audience is for. Who, this, who these documents are written for, and I think that's an important thing. As I listened to, to your meeting this week, uh, or last week, I was impressed with Ted, an engineer, and uh, the, the, uh, uh, the viewpoint that he was taking as uh, trying to make sure that that audience that we just talked about is getting the information that they need and and so I would also commend to you guys that, you know, you're 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 in a tough spot, and to be honest with you, I think in in a lot of cases, uh, you're damned if you do and damned if you don't. I've learned that. Yes. And and so, uh, <clears throat> thanks. I have a question. Yes. So we're talking about finished grade. We're talking about natural grade. I mean, we have a lot of varying topography in our city. Um, some of that that people may consider natural grade really isn't all that natural because dirt was moved when the road was built and pushed to the side or, or it's a gully and some fill was brought in. So what really determines a natural grade versus maybe a grade that is established uh, to, uh, to put the, the structure in place safely? Because we know that sometimes... Still, it has to be brought in because of dips and, and turns and, 
and also some people want a hillside and some people want a flat. So, how do you still determine? goes to that natural grade, but the, top, the topo maps, the topography maps mm -hmm. that the engineers have, that's, that's what we go by. If some neighbor puts some dirt on somebody else's lot, we don't go by that. We go by what the natural grain was on that lot when it was approved as a, as a subdivided lot. Well, I just think of, of some particular buildings in town that have brought in fill dirt to make it so that it's level. Um, now, they can do that. Right. But the measurement is from the natural grade from wherever the top or the, maps are the from. finished grade, whichever is lowest. Okay, that that's uh, that helps clarify because you know somebody asked me about that when they've seen people bring in truckloads of fill dirt and then wondering where that goes from from there. So yeah. okay, yeah. that answers. Thanks. An example that Ted uses his house. They, they it's like this a little bit, and he shaved off here. Yeah. to build it up here. Right. But still, the original natural grade lines are those that are used in terms of building. Okay. All right. Um, Carrie, I think your battery might be going dead, so if you could... My battery going dead? All right. Thank you, Wayne. Very much appreciate that. And we appreciate you. you and all the planning commissioners and your due diligence and your and your work on these things. Um, all right, the fourth item on this work uh, session agenda is the conditional use application for Summit Creek. Wayne, sorry, that's you again. <laughs> uh, Summit Creek wants to have a little sales office. So they've talked to us about it. And what we've uh, talked about is them having a, a small trailer. And you've seen them in some developments and so forth. And they're looking to put that in the back of the parking lot where their uh, mail facility is. Uh, it would be a temporary, long-term kind of thing. They'll tie into the sewer system. They'll tie into the water system. They'll pay fees to the city for just like a regular hookup, etc. But that little sales office then will be will be uh, kind of tucked away back in that parking lot. And the best what we've looked at is the conditional use permit process for them to pursue to get approval to uh, to, to put that in. Again, we had it was part of our public hearing. We had no comment one way or the other about it. So that has to go through review process with us and recommendation to you. So that too would be put on an agenda for a public hearing. For a public for hearing. For anyone to express any comments. One was, or another. was there any concern with the planning commission about having a temporary building as a business? Because that would kind of open a precedent for other people in town who may want to have a temporary building and then, and also added parking. This is a little unique, granted, but we felt this was the best alternative that meet Summit Creek's needs as well as the city without them building a structure on a lot for a sales office. So I think I think it, it's workable and I think it's something that the city can approve without violating any any real things. It's just it's more long term than what we would normally have for a how long are we saying long term? Permanent? Long no. Once they sell out, they're not going to have a sales office anymore. So Which would be... It's going to be a while. And every time they add a new yeah. section, then it's going to be another, another bunch 20. of years. So it could be... It could be 20, 30 years. <laughs> I would well, hope not that long. Well, look at how far it's taken to build out the regular parts of Woodland Hills that we've had. <laughs> I, I, think if, I think if we asked Bucky that question, he'd say he sure hopes it's not 20 or 30 yeah. years. Yeah. <laughs> of course not. But this seemed to be a workable solution. I think I think Ben Brimley just said made a comment. I think what did he say? Um, only a couple of years. Because it helps us only a few years. The other thing that I found in the code is I believe that this will need to be reviewed or we looked at every six months. So it's not wow. they have to understand that a 
another council could determine in six months or a planning commission. Ben would like to be unmuted. Mr. Ben would like to be unmuted. So your public hearing on that is still pending. You had one, and no. We comment. just have to have a and public no hearing now. Okay. Yeah. Well, I, I think that a that with a review, I think that's appropriate. I don't know if it's six months or a year, depending on what the the long term vision is there. But I think I think it's appropriate. I mean, they they don't want to have something shoddy looking because that reflects upon what they're building. Yeah, so they right. But I do think it sets a precedent for other businesses in town to to also petition for the same. As it should. Mm -hmm. I mean, we should consider we should, we should be yeah. fair to every single one who who comes forward. And I, I do like the temporary nature of it. I think that that inherently adds the checks and balances that are needed. Yeah. Okay, so we have the that is going to be put on a future agenda for us, right? Public hearing? Yeah, do do you already have a date kind of selected for that, Jody? Yes, it will be Ju uh, July 13th. July 13th meeting? And did Ben want to say something? Was if, if it's okay, I, I didn't want to butt in. Go ahead, did you have something? Well, I was just going to say the plan for us is, uh, you know, temporary, um, meaning with our inspiration building that we're also planning to renovate, we're going to put a, a permanent sales office on in that building and that that building is hopefully will be renovated within the next year year and a half and at that point then that trailer would no longer be necessary as a sales trailer thanks okay all right um any other questions on that from you guys okay the next item on our agenda is the ordinance amending our development and construction standards um, regarding underground utilities aligning the reference in our city code from 11-5-9 to 11-5-8. Jody, do you want to explain that? Uh, yes, going through the city uh, development and construction standards, which is the ordinance amending the so nothing is changing other than the the reference number okay because i couldn't Thanks. i was reading it and i kept thinking i don't see any change here <laughs> all right so is that something that usually the um codifiers catch if they're looking at the development and construction standards it possibly oh. would be Okay, but they weren't in this case. Yeah, the development and structure standards are referenced by the codified, but not, but not part done as part of the codification. Okay. And we're one hundred percent sure that's just a reference issue. Just referenced the wrong thing. Three people have reviewed it to make sure. Okay, <laughs> thank you. All right, um, number six: uh, the proposed ordinance adopting the amended. 2021 fiscal year budget. Chris. Hello, how are we doing? Can you guys hear me okay? <clears throat> okay, great. 2021, do you want me to pull up on screen? Does anybody have any general questions before um, that can be answered on the just the 2021 budget? So Chris, I kind of went through and uh, did what what I'd asked for, but I didn't get all the way through it, but I at least got through all of the, um, the regular budget. Um, what I was looking for as far as numbers is I wanted to compare where our budget was when we approved it in September, whatever the date was, and then what the adjusted, well, not the adjusted, but where we ended up. And I think it's useful for us to go through that exercise because again, budgeting is, it's hard, mm -hmm. especially it's hard. when you've got a year like COVID where you've got federal government money being handed out in huge piles, but we're also having to spend it in certain ways. 
Um, and so that makes it hard. And so it's kind of difficult to make sure that, again, we want to be as transparent as we can with the budget. I think that we all feel like that's important. Um, but I wanted to highlight some of the, some of the you know, ways that things got spent. And so there's a few different areas where we've got what appears to be huge increases in our spending. And that is true. Um, but also some of those are from uh, things that came up during the middle of the year. A good example is um, both the road bond and the water bond. So a lot of, a lot of increases there due to um, things that we made decisions to do. We also have um, professional services. We've had to use a lot more professional services than we did in the past. Um, in the past, mm -hmm. um, we also had to increase the attorney's fees. Um, in addition, we've got, uh, I'm trying, I'm trying to really quickly go through, um, uh, areas where, oh, streets, road, fuel, and supplies was up by quite a bit, 23,000 instead of 8,500. Um, miscellaneous repairs to city facilities. That's the one I was looking for. Now, without more detail, I might look at that and freak out because we only said $5,000 for that and we spent $50,000. My bet is that most of that was COVID money. And that was, for instance, the Zoom micro setup that we have and things like that. But I think that's the stuff that I wanna try and be a little more transparent in making sure that people know, hey, yes, Why? we spent a lot more money, but it was right. Um, code it was money. dedicated. Chris, you found that, that spot just a minute ago. Yeah. So I just wanted to say first, Dave, sorry. The There's been two problems with the reports, the 2021 and the 2022. The first with the 2021 is if you look at the screen there in the council room, it did go through and highlight and make comments. But when I submitted it to Jody, I submitted it in a CSV file and it, it blitzed everything out. So all the comments yeah. and the, the highlights were not transposed over. But if we go down to that particular one, on this, the miscellaneous for the city repairs, you can see that actually the money's for the security cameras. And okay. That, that's what's being proposed for the budget for this fiscal year. Now this fiscal year is pretty much gone unless they're gonna get security cameras installed before D June 30th, or at least we have a purchase request and purchase order out there. <clears throat> so once again, I apologize, this didn't get to you, but this sheet here does indicate some of the larger items that did change with a little note on there. So, Chris, did you say, I, I noticed we didn't have the 2020 in our packet. So, did you say you're going to send us this? It's 2022. Yeah, the 2022 one. Okay, but oh. let's just not confuse ourselves. We're I know. talking well, she 2021. Just said, right she just now. said 2020, I'm, and I'm, that's not what. Yeah, 2021 is 2020, yeah, this is, 2021. This is 2021. No, 21. Right. We're doing 2021, okay. 2022. We're not doing anything about 2020. Right. 2020 is in the books. Yeah, but that was September is when we ad we adopted that. Is in so what I'm saying is we adopted it in September of 2020. But I've been looking through our packet and I haven't been able to find it. it well, it must not be in order of where we're going in our packet. And I printed out the packet and I have the 2022 here, but not the 2021 as okay. I printed it out. So I was just looking okay. to see well, it closer. Right. I like right, but she didn't see it in the it. packet. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. So I, I believe, Jody, you did post that. Is that correct? It should be in the packet as part of the 20, The resolution is. But, th but that would. The, resolution with the scroll, added. scroll down past the two pages and it starts on page three. Okay. Of the resolution. Okay. It's gonna, it's we're still trying different. to work this. It doesn't, doesn't look like this, though. That's Agenda right. thing. Co correct. If this is. Yes. Yeah. Okay. I kind of keep the two budgets separate looking Does just because have... we're going two years here. Hey, Chris, can you repeat that? Yeah, I'm just trying to keep the two budgets looking a little bit differently the way they print out one because we are going over two different years. Um, so this one that we're currently at is the current year today that we're in. Right. But we're just trying to help Carrie find it in the packet. And yeah, it's... and it just looked differently than I traditionally know it has. To right. Look couple of questions, Chris. Yes. Uh, what is the uh, capital uh, funding that we put in for the fire truck for, 
for this 2021. So I think you put in 5,000. Let's just look real quick at the bottom here. 5,000 is all. And where's the, what's the number if you can find it? Because that'll uh, help those of the council members looking through their packets to find it. Oh, I guess the screen is good. General fund, account number 4850, and it was $5,000. And then we then that shows that we've got twenty seven sixty for the EMS. Correct. Okay, so then we have we have about seventy seven seventy eight hundred dollars that we've put in capital for those two items that are life saving. Yes, for this twenty one year. Go up to. Uh, Grandma and attorney fees. What? Yes, what? So what did you say? What about grandma and attorney fees? Yeah, grandma and attorney fees. I want to do a comparison here. Okay, attorney fees this year so far. What uh, number is that? Would you five thousand dollars, something like that? Let me get back up to the attorney what? section. And the attorney section right here is what? we originally budgeted thirty thousand. Through April, it was 54,000, and we're anticipating to be 65,000 by the end of the year. So, so my point is, because of a neighborhood dispute, people don't like that, but you know, sometimes the truth hurts, we are spending significant amount of money chasing that where we could be putting money for life-saving equipment. I just want to put that in perspective. And Chris, when you say end of the year, you're talking June 30th, um, 2021 is end of fiscal year. Correct. Yes. That we will have spent 65000 Estimation, yes. Yes. It could be a little just, bit more, could be less. Yes. I, when you just said end of year, some people might not know right. that's the end of our fiscal year. Gotcha. Next week. So that's a good perspective for us to keep in mind, Bob. Thank you. And for our citizens to see. Okay. Um, so we might need to run through this just a little bit if you guys have questions, because as Chris said, that we, he. Yeah, and Chris, is there any way that we could get this spreadsheet um, made available? Absolutely. Yep. If, yeah, if with the, the notes. notes. Yes. Uh, nothing against the CSV or the PDF, but really have to have no you need the notes and that's what i that's exactly what and I'm, that's what i was missing because i had looked through prior yes. and then so we're just still having some hiccups getting with this new agenda format that package. puts all the packets together and yeah. so forth and yeah, i do uh, want to just mention again though the this attorney fee has nothing to do with the lawsuit that's been filed with the city that is currently being covered by the utah local government's trust and our insurance policy They've authorized fifty thousand dollars, and I've not seen a report lately to where they are. But this is this is completely autonomous from that. The city. Of so then, what's the sixty-five k for? These are for different questions that have been brought up regarding ordinances, um, some grammar questions that have been brought to the attorney's attention, and legal advice that we're getting as um, staff and mayor and council on um, just complaints filed with. Uh state departments, yes. um, protests so, for grammar requests. That so, so, so could were, you then classify this as collateral to um, litigation type or? Um, Chris, doesn't it include some actual litigation? Because we've got several. The, the 50,000 was just for the one case, right? Let's be really careful though. There is not a lawsuit mm -mm. filed. There is a pending issue with the fourth district court. Right. Okay. And that it's not a lawsuit though. It's an appeal of a decision made by the board of adjustments. Okay. Thank so you. it let's, let's. That's a good clarification. Thank you. Get that clarification. I just. Yes. Thank you, Jeffy. Thank you. And, and yeah, and this is um, appeals filed to the board of adjustment and the, what's the other board, Corbett? The Building Code Board of Appeals, finding out it, which appeals are actually appropriate to put before those boards, um, whether the boards are 
operating exactly how they're supposed to be operating. Um, when people come, when we've had complaints about um, decisions the city's made, and we have to go to, we have to find out: do we need to consult with other experts to justify our decisions, or do we have the appropriate justifications? And we have to run a lot of we've, we're running a lot of that past our attorneys because none of us are attorneys <laughs> and our city staff is well, very minimal oh. well paul, paul is an attorney right, actually i, I would agree that paul, is paul just got thrown sorry under the bus. sorry sorry paul <laughs> but <laughs> paul is not serving on the city council as an attorney he is serving as a council member. We're simply council members. But to be fair, he's not a municipal attorney. Right. It, true. That is a very unique. It is a whole different. Yes. That, and I think it's really important. And I was actually going to mention this later, but I'll mention it now. Our, our, not only our council, but our entire city structure is not, has never been built the way a provo or an orum has right. been built. We do not have a city engineer. We rely on the builder, an engineer the record. person, mm -hmm. to go get an engineer, do the engineering forms, stamp it, they're the engineer. Do we have a city engineer that checks it? No. That's a fundamental decision that was made years ago to keep our city government small. We didn't want to become Provo, Spanish Fork, or Orem. Right. And so the reason we don't have not had up until now a city attorney is for that exact same reason. Now, if circumstances change, which this year they dramatically changed, and all of a sudden we were getting legal questions right, left, underside, upside, mm -hmm. and we had to get answers because we were being told we had to get answers. So that's the reason the city made a shift. We're also being told that we now need to hire a city engineer. Again, from a, from a resident standpoint, we as residents have to decide, do we pay for a city engineer, yes or no? If we do, that's fine. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm not against having a city engineer, but you can't change the rules in the middle of the ball game. Right. Agreed. Well, and I also think to your point, um, an engineering stamp that we're talking about for residential homes should be an engineering stamp that should their stamp should be valid to us when we get their building permits. Now we do hire a consulting engineer to do city business, which is LEI, which we have used for several years now um, as as a so called city engineer, but not with regards to residential um, properties, it's more to city infrastructure. And I think that's a clarification that needs to put in there as well. Yeah. Well, it, and, and when we have what is called a wet stamp, we have a responsibility to accept that mm -hmm. until it's proven otherwise that it's, that it's not right. And so we have to proceed as if everything is right until we're proven that it's not. And we haven't. And I think to that point, do we have to hire a city engineer to check to make sure a different engineer is qualified to to stamp someone's residential plans? You know, is that what residents want us to do is just to be redundant in that? Or can we accept the stamp that was given to us on plans that were drawn and stamped by a legal certified engineer? <laughs> Hey, again, these are all choices. Right. And as a city up until now, the ball game we've been playing is keep the city staff small, keep costs the, down, cost down uh, let the builders bear the burden of that cost of having to get the engineering done. Mm -hmm. That's always been the assumption. So again, if that assumption changes, yes, we can hire an engineer, certainly. Yep. But the budget's going to increase. That's by right. And, that and, 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 to, <laughs> and kind of back to the point initially, we have been required because of a lot of questions that have gone to, to through things that are governed by state statute now. So we have to respond. 
um, and they have to be responded to, but 98% of these questions and problems that we've had to go to cities to our city attorneys for advice are coming from one source in the city. It's not coming from multiple citizens. It's coming from one, one source. And I think it's important for people to, you know, it's not like we have, I mean, we have about, four, about 450 homes. It's not like 50 or 75 or 100 people are, or even 20 are asking these questions. It's one with two or three other families saying, yeah, us too, we kind of want to know. So I think it's important to know that this is a lot of expense coming from basically one source. And, and we need to be careful making decisions that aren't because of one or two individuals, in my opinion. You're absolutely correct. We, you know, we have to we have to get our get out of the weeds and look at the big picture and balance all of this between uh, the, the various elements of the of the topic. Well, and I think it's important to note that it's required of us to respond. And to that's some of to some of these no things choice. we have no choice to but right. to respond and we can only respond with legal counsel. Because it's just like Doral said, we can't make those decisions. We don't, it's not our expertise. It's not something that we know. And so we have to pay to be able to have a correct response and to make sure that we're staying in, in um, line with what the statute requires of us as a city. Other cities have an internal uh, attorney who would handle all that as part of their, their salary. Um, we have to contract, which then adds up over time. Can I have a comment? I mean, to me, this is, it's not just the, the, the funds, but we are talking about scarce resources, right? We're talking about limited resources and how do we expend them. We have statutes that require us to do certain things. We don't have a choice. If A happens, B has to happen. And if B costs, we incur that cost. And if it's not in our budget, we figure this out. We change the budget. We but, but the, the, the option is decrease expenses or increase revenue. And, and if expenses are coming at us that we have to respond to, the, the only alternative is to increase revenue, i.e. increase taxes. And that's a concern, Dave, back to your point. I think a lot of those decisions, it wasn't made because we want, I mean, it was made in part because we want to maintain that hometown feel, but in large parts, because we don't want to pay, you know, double the tax rates. And so it comes down to a financial decision. Do we want to pay for a city attorney? Do we want to pay for a city engineer? If, if, if we had unlimited resources, I'd say, sure. Absolutely. But we don't. <laughs> and so it, the decision to say yes to either of those questions means a decision to say yes to increased expense, i.e. Mm -hmm. increased revenue, i.e. increased taxes. And, and then the, the element within that is that we are taking those monies away from other things. And, and oftentimes those things are nece necessary, but not governed by a state statute. Yeah, they're not required by statute, but they're really, really important for the services for our city. That's right. They're, they're health and safety. And so the, it has to take a back seat, even though it's more important. That's right. Mm -hmm. To, and, to and more, or important to more citizens, yeah. perhaps. And, right. and, and that was my point. And, and additionally, I would also like to say that referendums costs a good amount of money in for, from a lot of places. We have to consult with our attorneys. We have to perhaps hold a special election. And so there's if there's something that's really important for the citizens to want to comment, it's important that we do it. But I think there are also a lot of citizens that feel like, oh, well, yeah, what well, would it hurt just for us to have a vote and see what everybody thinks? And so what they need to know is it incurs costs. And that's fine if that's what if they would rather do that than pay for a fire truck or fix their road or fix their water pipe or you know I mean they just well, need to know that we do have scarce resources and so we need you know they just need to think carefully about where they want those resources. And, and, and if we're going to have referendum after referendum, and I'm okay with that, but if we're going to have them, at least we need to have participation in the process during the process instead of coming in afterwards and say, oh, let's have a referendum, guys. Right. Well, and I think and that's frustrating. The important part there, too, Mayor 
uh, is that I think a lot of residents just think, well, yeah, we always have an election. I can sign this and we'll vote. And they don't realize that we pay as a city um, for that ballot. Yeah. And and it, well, costs, wait, it costs money. It, it's also because we had to send out some email that I saw go out from our city that says there's no cost to this referendum. I read it, I saw it, and I don't believe it. Well, because I know Jody's already spent the time to well, do think, a lot think, of work. That's, so that's, why did that go out? It's, it's not on the cost of the referendum. It's on if that referendum ordinance were to be repealed is there a cost to that and the answer is not really, no not much yeah. so, but is so there they're, a cost they're, they're, to the referendum yes but, but times the citizens saw that and oh good it's it's free let them referendum every everything yeah. we or everything it, we it's how they define cost oh. is what's well, the difference and the That's state bad. the state def the state dictates that. Well, I'd rather see another email go out and say we've spent X hours preparing this because we have, and that's not free. But right. Anyway, get off my right. That's anyway. So, yeah, it's very frustrating. Okay, so back to this 2021 budget. Um, so, do we have to add that to this amended budget? This referendum costs? No. No, this no, just for another week. So okay. Well, I wasn't sure two. because it was it was just pass i mean it was just processed so i don't but didn't the, sure if it was off of this year's budget amended budget or if it will be included in next the year cost would be the main next cost year. is when the vote takes place we have to pay the county the main cost right now to you is employee and yeah. attorney exactly consulting here yeah. that's not little okay and but we yeah and that is included in this, okay. in this change. Okay. So those things are included. That's what I wanted to know. Because sometimes it is hard when it's just a one liner and we don't always right. know the, right. the details of each of those lines and why it, why it means what it does. So my question is, we've got this glitch because you guys didn't get all these comments that we spent time writing and you kind of need them. Don't we have to, feel, to pass this tonight? Yes. I mean, yeah. Well, so that's my question. So, do we need just do we need to take the time to go through this so that you you can see what they are and ask your questions now? Because we want it. I want you guys to have the information you need. We want to do this correctly. So, uh, if we can do it quickly, yeah. Let Let me just say this. Overall. We did a really good job with the budget this year. And, and I say we in that like the city. Like we claim like <laughs> we did a great job. No. Our city employees and some of the decisions that we made did a great job with this year's budget. The good news is revenues were significantly higher than we had planned, which means that Chris is always extremely conservative when it comes to revenue which is a good thing because if the world goes upside down like it did this last year, we had no idea. The cool thing was I was looking at sales tax. Man, we killed it on sales tax. Everyone's so buying from home. <laughs> people keep ordering from Amazon. It's awesome. Um, or wherever you order from. Um, yeah, it sure helps, doesn't so, it? So there were... $50,000. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, we're talking, there were some significant changes in our, in our overall money. And to be fair, building helped us a lot. I yes. Mean, we're getting a, a, an increase in property taxes, which we, you know, if we can continue to make, uh, make progress on keeping our tax rate flat so that we can capture that, the increased money, then that is significantly helpful. So I think revenue wise, Chris being so conservative and us having a, a, a year that was slightly different, all helped. As far as expense wise, we, with the exception of the legal fees, I think every area was either the same or lower um, than our expenses. So that's, really, really good. I would mention one other thing, and that is the upgrades that we did for COVID, which was covered by COVID money, but it shows up in our expenses. 
Right. So it's easy to look at that and go, well, what are they spending money on? Right. But it also shows up in our revenues, right? Yeah. It does. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you just got to match those two up and then you'll And recognize as we look from revenue from, at, you know, going forward from past years to future years that there was a bump, not because of sales tax or property tax, but because of COVID. We'll have the same with the ARP money for two years in a row. It'll show a bump and then on the third year, we'll go back to normal. And, goes, bye -bye. and so I think we need to consider that. We also last year cut our budget quite significantly without even, um, you know, understanding the impact COVID would have on us. We knew it would have something and we and we had promised our residents we would include those things back into a new budget, which could have an impact as well. Chris, did I summarize that appropriately? I, I think you did with giving too much praise, but you know, that budget hearing or that budget retreat we had a year ago, that was very painful, but it, showed and proved fruitful because we were able to cut and still come ahead in this budget this year. So that was, that was well worth it. Chris, can I ask a question? So at the very uh, end of the total revenue, you've got some appropriation of fund balance of 220,610. Usually that's just to make up what, you know, we had overspent on things, right? Um, Correct. Is, is that something that there is there an offset somewhere to help us understand why we thought it would be zero and it turned out to be 220? So I actually, when the crystal ball is done or the audit is done, that I anticipate that being significantly less. The reason that we're taking more out now is at the end of the year, we have to anticipate expenses that could come and bills that could come to us even up through August that have to be put back into this year. And so taking and making sure we've got enough in categories to cover those expenses so we don't go over our budget and have an audit finding <coughs> helps us with that budget increase in fund balance um, or taking it from the savings account basically. So if we had to identify a few things, um, one would be some salaries did, did increase a little bit. Jody has gone basically full time. There's been uh, overtime with several of the employees in dealing with various aspects of the city. The attorney fees have gone up. We used to have um, David Church covered a lot of our attorney stuff through the Utah League of Cities and Towns. Um, and there were some of the other uh, items that you guys discussed earlier. Um, let's go down through this a little bit here. So there's the wages there on that top line. Um, the benefits uh, change because of the wages. The the office supplies artificially inflated. The office supplies look artificially inflated, but a lot of that was due to the COVID monies. So that $58,000, we originally started with 9,000 and we're gonna end about 58,000 and all but of about 12,000 of that is coming from the COVID monies. Um, the same with the computers. Uh, there were several new computers purchased for the city offices with the COVID funds. And we've talked about the attorney, planning commission wages. Uh, Wayne did uh, waive his fees this year, <laughs> $1,200. I shouldn't say fees, his wage. Uh, there was one paycheck given in July 5th that covered um, uh, the, the first one for this year. The um, ordinance officer, Craig, spent more time. So when the payroll with, with the employees that are, um, uh, when they enter their time, they can categorize it to, to several different areas. And one of them, like Craig can do fire enforcement or roads or water. Same with Corbett's got a bunch of different ones or site, site plans. Anyways, Craig had spent more time this year on ordinance enforcement than we had originally anticipated, but that offsets in another place that um, in the road salary, you'll see that that's actually down. Um, fire wages went up a little bit. We have significantly amount new firefighters at that are certified through the state of Utah, just as they are in Provo and Salt Lake City that have come on since the Pole Creek fire. So the year end stipends um, have increased because of those certifications. Um, the fire training, we are, that one's decreasing. We've talked about carrying that over to the next year since fire school was canceled. Firefighter appreciation actually did come in about $500. However, the majority of that was covered by a generous donor, anonymous donor, um, who covered the firefighter appreciation dinner this year. EMS fire or EMS capital outlay, that was for several pieces of new equipment for the EMTs. Fortunately, we had it. Unfortunately, we've had to use it. Um, 
And so it was very, very nice that we had that new upgraded equipment to be able to help our citizens out. Um, building inspections, this has gone up from 1600 to about 28,000 because we are using the outside, um, uh, totally slipped my mind, Sunrise Engineering to do our building inspections now. But most of that's recovered back through. Correct, correct. Yeah, there's an in and out. We, so we so it's, it is an expense, but it, it's offset. Yeah, we originally started out with the road street salary at 108,000, but we're gonna end up roughly about 78,000 this year, significant decrease. That's one of those things I talked about with like Craig salary and the fire ordinance or the um, ordinance enforcement. He may have spent more time there um, and less time in roads. Same with Corbett, he may have spent more time in water with all the PRV stuff this year and less time in roads because we've had Bancon working on the roads um, and those kinds of things. Um, it, these cameras, I don't know what we're gonna do with these cameras, if there's still a, a thing that we're gonna do in the city. We talked about taking about 10,000 of the money from um, the specific roads budget because of some of the security issues with our roads equipment. And then the other um, about 40-ish thousand dollars from um, the miscellaneous streets right here on line 178. And so that's why those two amounts are up. And aren't we, weren't we going to use some water funds? Uh, when we get to the water funds, there, there could be a chunk from the water funds to cover the tanks up above. Okay. Uh, we had an outstanding bill from Utah County for $70,368 for an interlocal agreement that we did on the corner of Elkridge, Salem, Woodland Hills, Utah County, somewhere down in that area where this is to capture or help divert some of our storm water. Um, that agreement was signed a couple of years ago. There was been some back and forth on really if that was something Woodland Hill should have participated in or not. However, the county- well they, well, they were basically holding our mitigation whole project hostage for that. Correct. Yep. They were holding over $300,000 if we didn't participate in that interlocal agreement. <laughs> so we did end up paying that. Um, what What's the 185 line that went from zero to a bunch? That's what we're talking about. Okay. So, All right. and actually it's, um, what you're talking about now is that they weren't going to reimburse us, but if we hadn't signed that agreement, they weren't even going to let us be part of the whole project. Oh, so, so they, they got were the whole project hostage to do it on whether we would sign this agreement for the stormwater. Then we hadn't paid it. And so then they were saying they weren't going to reimburse. Yeah. So it's two different, two different things over the same money anyway yeah they they held the mitigation money up because of a stormwater issue that had nothing to do with the fire but they included it in the interlocal agreement yeah that was anyway go ahead chris no you're fine the fire mitigate or the cap the mitigation was moved to capital projects we'll talk about that in a second fiber installs had significantly uh, increased because more residents are signing up for that fiber i think i sent you a, a notice of take rate um, our city is really taking advantage of that fiber. And so this is basically an in and out. We've collected the revenues. We sent a, a portion, a large portion of the 75,000 back to Utopia for all the installs. Um, the, so Paul, you asked about the, let's go back to the money coming from savings. Um, we have about 220,000 and I don't, like I said, I don't think we're gonna need that much. However, yes, a chunk of that did go into the capital projects. Uh, right, let's see, let me get to it. To cover the mitigation costs. <clears throat> Excuse me. Because we did have to come up with our portion of that, correct? That co to cover the, pro the increase in property value. It wasn't actually any of the, uh, the project. It was the, the differences in the property value from when we first started yeah. to when we finished. Can I ask you a quick question about that fund balance too? I know that the legislature changed it that we can keep 35% of our of our money in a kind of a rainy day fund. How what is the percentage that we normally keep? We try to keep it between 0 and 18 or 3 and 18%. And so it just depends. I could go back year to year and just see what we have either dipped into savings or been able to save. That's kind of been our our that's actually kind of statute in the state too, three to 18%. 
when we were a town, we used to save up, we could save up to 75%, but yeah, years ago. Now is 100% and a city is now 35% that changed this legislative session. So I wondering if we wanted to or had the ability to save more than 18% for a rainy day. Let's, um, so we, we do have some of these transfers right here that we're starting to save now, but we're using the mechanism of the capital projects to do that instead of the fund balance. So we're kind of doing it, but not within the general fund at 35%. All right. That's and then when we get to 2022, Carrie, let, let's talk about that again, because it's being proposed that we save even a little bit more for rainy days and those and future purchases. It's not a bad future goal. No. no. Okay, now and, and if and honestly, like if you just said, you don't think we're going to use that whole transfer out, so that's good. Anyway, sorry, go ahead. Never mind. Right. So I'm jumping now. This is the capital projects fund. This highlighted area I have here. This is the three hundred seventy thousand dollars that the county is holding. Had we not paid that other seventy thousand, and so um, our new treasurer was checking, or Jody was checking to see where the status is of that check. Supposedly the check was cut. We just need to pay our portion of the seventy thousand to get our three hundred and seventy thousand. So that still hoping that that'll come before June thirtieth. She yeah. said. She said it's been deposited. Fantastic. Um, let me scroll down. These are so all these accounts I'm going over. These are just basically the roads account or the savings account that we've set up for um, fire or EMS. There's that twenty seven sixty. Um, and and snowplow. So those are the savings accounts right now in the cap or the future capital and, projects. And real quick again, you said that those monies put into that capital outlay savings account they don't count against the thirty five percent. Correct. And we really technically they're not a savings account. They're just for right your capital. Okay. Okay. Or savings so we account. save more. And yeah. one of the benefits of doing it this way is because is instead of it just looking on a sheet like one giant pot of money, yeah. it's allocated I a little like better yeah. toward what the goal is for it in the future, which I think is very helpful and will be helpful going forward for councils as they're making decisions. Yeah. And um, just, I'm just <clears throat> going to interject here. I really appreciate the time that Chris spent putting, trying to put the comments in. I'm sorry they that we glitched getting them out put back out again but i really like the more information being there so in the future if you should get the comments with the sheet it will help answer a lot of your questions i think and help illustrate where what's happening so, you know, i think if chris saves this as a pdf then jody can upload it to the agenda as another attachment and then we'll have it and the public She's already sent me a request to send that to her. So yes, I will be doing that here shortly. <laughs> um, yeah, that's great. Great. Thank yes. you. Let's okay. just look at the water real quick. There's a few yeah. things. The water revenues have increased significantly because we had to raise water rates due to the bond. Um, the first year we don't have a payment on the bond. We're to build up that account to make the payment. So it's going to be nice when we get through a full year, including the summer, to be able to see how much revenue we will be bringing in to see how our rates align with, with the bond covenants and payment what is the uh um that's i don't know what the, what it's called that surcharge or whatever how was that collection coming along oh yeah the for the properties the yeah. standby v standby thank you thank you very much standby I, I noticed Lori is on Lori, do you have any comments on that standby fee <laughs> oh maybe we have to unmute her if she's well, that, that's putting her on the spot. So I, I don't really know. Personally, we, we can ask Lori to get us a, a quick numbers and see. Okay, because that, that would be interesting. <clears throat> um, yeah. So another big thing we added this year was the emergency uh, water repair and roads. And so we originally budgeted 21,000 for that. And we know it's coming in over $2 million or at $2 million. Um, because of this two million. <laughs> say two. when your when your system fails yeah oh did i say two hundred thousand or two thousand no you said 21 it says 21 to two just, million we're That's just right. laughing we can see oh, the okay. sorry <laughs> um you can't see our road our road salaries went down but our water salaries increased which you know that's 
a natural effect. If, had, if both of them had increased, then we would want to take a look and see what, what's going on in that area. But um, so that's the top line there. And then capital outlay, we'd started with $218,000. And that was mainly going to be for spring drive. But because we've got the emergency water, we're able to take that out. And yes, $10,000, whoever brought that up of the cameras is slated to come out of the water account here. And I believe, Wendy, we went through everything of the increases and decreases. Yeah, this is a good yes, summary. Thank you. Good summer. No, because even though we've been going over this for an entire year, it's it's nice to see those highlights again and to remind us because there were a lot of um, unusual. just weird things and unusual things. We had COVID, we had our whole water line system needing to be replaced, which then necessitated our roads to be replaced. So things that we didn't anticipate a year ago. So thank you very much for doing that. You're welcome. So that would be for the 2021 year, if anybody has any more questions or. And so this has to be approved tonight. Approved tonight. Before June so 3rd. Yeah. If, if you have any large heartburn, then we need to make changes or approve it. So any other questions or problems? The only other question that I have is it did balance, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what the taking the money out of the fund balance does. Is make it balance. Okay. <laughs> Let's just double check here. Yeah, we come to a zero. We're in and out. Okay. That's that's what's required by state law. So. Right. Yep. And so then, if you are correct, and we do not have to take that much out of the fund balance, then what will happen? to keep that at zero? What will we do with that money? So it's at a zero balance right now. <clears throat> We're, you guys are voting on it. It's, it's virtually impossible because of expenses that'll be coming in to, what we're trying to do is- Right, but what I'm saying, final tally comes in, <clears throat> that green line where it shows what we're taking out of fund balance. Okay, yes. that 610. Okay, everything, fi we finally got all the final numbers in and we're at, I'm just going to just make up a number. We're at 175.60. Okay. Then what do we do? What is that $45,000? Where's that going to go back in somewhere? That'll be in our fund balance that's carried over from year to year on the balance sheet. So the fund balance will just be, Less. The, the, take, the money we take out of fund balance on this will just be reduced. So that money will, so our fund balance will be higher than what we are anticipating by this. Correct. Okay. Just to make that clear to Thanks. everyone. Okay. Thank you. All right. Then moving on, because we're like an hour and a half behind schedule now, but yeah. it's it for good reasons. All right. Um, number seven, the, the ordinance adopting our 2022 fiscal year budget. Okay. I want to stay on 2021 just for a second. And oh, yeah. Talk. No, no. You're okay. Let's go to 2022. But I want to talk about property taxes. So we've collected so far 735,854 in this current year. We think, I think before the end of the year, before next week, by the time we get the county records back in, it'll be 738,000. So keep that in mind. Now I'm gonna to jump to next fiscal year. We originally thought we would have about a $735,000 um, collection. Um, with some proposals and some changes, looking at asking for 770,000, which would include a truth and taxation hearing before September 1st of next year. I wanna pull up a sheet that, or a website that I use that has been updated from the state that has been deleted. Let me just pull it up real so quick. So Chris, are, are you anticipating that we did uh, something similar to last year where we just hold the same property tax rate rather than adjust it? No, and this is what I wanna show you. Is is the screen of the Utah certified tax rate showing up? No, we're still seeing your 2021. Okay, let me, let me sh I gotta, guess I gotta reshare the screen. Um, I did re check tonight and the tax rate for next year has been um, proposed by the state of Utah. And let me stop sharing that screen. And we'll share this screen. Okay, so this is the certified tax rate. This is the 
website that I go to. Let's yeah. See if I can make it a little bigger without losing too much integrity. It, it's fine. I okay. We can see it. Yeah. So what they're proposing for our tax rate <laughs> next year is a point zero zero three nine one five, and that would get us seven hundred twenty one thousand eight hundred thirty four estimated property tax dollars. So this year we've already collected seven hundred thirty five thousand. They're proposing we collect seven hundred twenty one next year, and I was just kind of playing around with this. If we want to collect the seven hundred seventy thousand, I think that's a point zero zero four four. One eight. Let me see if that gets us close. You missed the point. Yeah, we think you missed the. Yeah, there you go. Try again. So it's right around the point zero zero four one eight. Now let's let's take a look at a report. Um, our tax rate history. Please tell me if that, uh, let's see. Is yep. the tax rate history showing now? Yes, we are seeing yep, it. Got it. Okay. So last year, Carrie, we, um, the certified tax rate came from the state of a 0 0.004102 and the council voted for 0 0.04345. So what we're asking for <clears throat> from year to year, it looks like the past couple of years, the council has voted to change the tax rate, but in the year 2018 and 17, uh, city accepted the certified tax rate from the state of Utah. Um, just wanted to just kind of show you how the, the voting has gone the past couple of years. So my question is, I thought that they set their tax rate to hold our dollars steady. Roughly. I, I think. Yeah. They do. And so, yeah. but the tax rate they have set is now is less. Lower. less <laughs> quite, yeah. $50,000 lower. Yeah, is it $50,000 out of 750 50, roughly is a large amount. Is, is, is that a preliminary number or is that just, well, that's preliminary data, that's not final. No, 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 it's only it's only about $14,000 difference because if they remember, we're setting at 735 originally, this current year we're collecting 735 and they're saying with their tax rate, they're saying 721. Now with our proposed rate, Yes, then you're talking in the fifty thousand dollar range, but certified tax rate and what the state is proposing to us. I see. Collected this year, there's a fifteen thousand dollar difference. And that that. Oh, this is a test. <laughs> and that that takes into consideration any new construction that that will go into. Uh, that we'll receive taxes on this coming year. No, because they, the state doesn't really know the valuation of the homes. Okay. They're going to be completed and all that kind of stuff. So this is the state's best estimation on previous years. Okay, that's good. So from your estimation, then, should we accept the state's tax rate or will we need to do a truth in taxation and change that rate? Uh, just so that we can maintain our current services. That's why you guys, the all wise and no council. So we have done the budget with the 770 amount, which means right. we would need to increase the tax rate. All right. But what I think what Chris was pointing out by going to the historical is if you look at that proposed tax rate, it's, you know, 0 0.0041, and I'm stopping there. Consistent. And then you go over to go back to the report there, Chris. So it's lower than our last year's rate. It's lower than the previous year's rate. It's lower than 2018, 2017, 2016, 2015. I mean, All the way even with a raise, it's way lower than the certified tax rate right. has been. Has which, been. Which is a messaging. This is a lower tax rate than we've had in the past, but technically, according to the state, it would be considered a tax raise, and that's why we have to have a truth in taxation. Yeah, which, again, if, if, if you pay attention, mm -hmm. cities that are doing a lot of development, always have a higher tax rate at the beginning of that development growth curve. Mm -hmm. But once the growth curve kind of tips, once you kind of get growth slowing down, 
then their tax rate comes down quite a bit because you now have less empty lots, more taxable property, and so the burden is spread over more homes. So we definitely in the last few years have been at the beginning of our growth curve. Right. And that growth is still continuing. I, I don't see it abating Anytime for the next soon. few few years. Yep. So having said that, that's why our tax rate has to be a little bit higher now. But the benefit is that in the future, once we're closer to build out, then we won't have that high of a tax burden because we can spread it out. So technically our tax rate will be lower than last year, although it will, we will have a truth in taxation. It'll be higher than what the county what, is proposing. Yeah, it's higher than what the county proposes. So I yep. guess that's one thing that we need to make sure that we are the other reiterating. Thing that we need to pay attention to as we look at the 2022 budget is where are we saving and what are our investments? Because mm -hmm. if we're going to ask for a tax increase, <laughs> even though it's less, but you, you get the <laughs> yeah, idea. Yeah, that's the hard if part. If we're going to ask for that more money, then we need to show where that money is going. And it, it, it needs to be towards an investment, either in the fire, the, the roads, or the water, or whatever. We, and, and let's not forget also that one of the reasons that we were able to keep some expenses down is because we shifted it to the water project. Mm -hmm. which included a water increase, which is effectively a tax. So we need to be careful about, you know. Just well, it's, a use fee. it's not a tax, it's not a but tax. it is. It's a use fee. But, but it is money out of our citizens' pockets. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know how, I don't know how you. It's a use fee. Well, because they're paying for the water they're getting, it's, as opposed yeah. to. It, it, I didn't, it didn't use to cost so much. You're right. <laughs> so what but we did, because we had pipes already in the ground and we weren't paying to keep maintain them. Well, and it's important <laughs> to note to the residents that water has to pay for water based on state statute. We can't take that from any other part of the budget. And so when there is a need for water infrastructure, it has to come from water revenue. Yeah. And I think it's, it's um, fair to note that there are a lot of other cities that use for instance, their water budget, they always, they, they collect their water fees and stuff so that they have um, plenty of extra revenue, which they then transfer to their general funds to fund other things. And we have deliberately as a city not done that. So then that means when we do end up with extra costs in our water fund for things like putting in new pipes, then we have to raise our water rates because we don't have extra money in that fund that we're collecting routinely. So I think that was, that was a decision made years ago before me or anyone else. And I think it was, I, I mean, I think that's a wise decision because it keeps it a little more clear and transparent where where the money is being collected and where it's being spent. So I, I, I appreciate the efforts of previous um, administrations in doing that, so. So I've gone through and highlighted this budget without the comments like the other one, but I've kind of highlighted some of the differences between what the employees originally asked for versus what the mayor um, is proposing today with the budget. Um, keep in mind that this budget is we've had more um, involvement with different committees than we ever had before. The finance committee and Dave took a huge role and lead in actually helping to garner some of these um, numbers and get some of the numbers from the employees, which for me was, was a different process this year, but I think it's been really fruitful to have outside um, influence of citizens to help put this together. And then I think that gave more input for the mayor so she could finally put this together for your, for your vote tonight. Um, one thing we need to keep in mind is that if you do want to hold a truth in taxation hearing, we're, you're just going to vote on a temporary budget this evening. Um, if you don't want to do truth in taxation hearing, we need to make some changes in the proposed revenues um, and make some other changes in the budget so we can make it a zero-based budget. However, even if you do decide tonight to do a truth in taxation hearing in August, 
you still have the, the option to vote no on that and the budget can be changed at that point. So you're not locking yourself into anything tonight by saying you want a truth and taxation hearing. It's not a guarantee property taxes are gonna go up until you vote in August after public hearing. So this is in the, in the budget, it, the 735 to the 770, that's the, that's the difference in, uh, from last year, to last year to this year. Yes. Okay. So you will still see though, as we do this budget, that there is an appropriation of the fund balance. And let me check one item here real quick. And fund balances are basically our savings so that people who are listening understand what that is. Yes, we had roughly about $560,000 in monies carried over from year to year. And like I said, those numbers fluctuate and there's kind of a formulaic way we've got to go through it by taking out Class C road funds that may have not been spent, which our city has no trouble spending those road funds every year, especially with the snow plow that we... Um, so, so are you saying that we're taking just about 60% out of that savings to fund 2021? I mean, 2020. So we're still not collecting enough property tax or rep, excuse me, we're still not having enough revenues for our expenses. So we're having to take it out of savings. And you'll see a couple of the big line items coming up of why that, that may be happening. Um, uh, so in theory, yes, could you get, you could raise the property tax rate up to 0 0.007 and make news and and uh you know basically pillage all the residents for the money and that may not be the the best option but you do have an option to raise that property tax more than seven hundred seventy thousand this year um yes so let's just talk about the the big one still is going to be projected amount of attorney expenses for next year um looking at current expenses it's estimated that it's going to be roughly $132,000 next year for attorney expenses. Um, I highlighted Wayne's salary. I haven't talked to Wayne yet if he still wants his $1,200, but I just put that in there. Chris, that estimate is based on if we spent, continue to spend at the current rate we've been spending over the last few months, right? Correct. It's gone down just a little bit last month. Our first couple months bills were 12, 11, $10,000. Uh, it went down to about 8,000 last month. I don't know what it's going to be this current month. So that was just the best guess estimate we could do. Um, I believe Bob, you sent me these dispatch fees are going to go up a little bit for our city. Is that you, Bob, or somebody else? Yeah, I think that was me. Okay. Um, street wages. I'm not quite sure they're going to be quite 135,000, but, but because we had an anomaly year with water, I'm just going to put it back to previous year's uh, averages and, and leave it at that 135,000 ish right now. Um, roads discretionary proposing that that goes down just slightly. Streets capital outlay. Originally, the employees asked for 168,000, but cutting that down to 29, because many of the roads are going to be done this year through bonding. And I see uh, Mark is on with us and he'll be talking about that here in a second. But um, we're getting a lot of roads done with this water project, which has been a, a benefit to the city. I'm increasing the snow plow capital outlay. Corbett wants to build an auger system to help be able to stack salt higher in the salt shed instead of basically as high as the, the bucket will reach on the, um, on the front end loader. It's very, for what it's gonna do, it's pretty minimal. It's about 15, $18,000, um, but that'll help us be able to store more salt um, so when the, but when the employees originally came and asked for their budgets, we were $336,000 over almost $337,000 over budget working with the mayor and the finance committee and others. We, um, and the employees and the employees, sorry. And the employees were, were at uh, a zero based budget. Another big one is, and Bobby brought this up earlier is saving for the, the new fire truck or current fire engines, 12 years old, um, uh, Craig has been asking for a couple of years to put $50,000 away for a future fire truck that we know we're going to need to purchase. Um, it was nixed last year's budget this year, um, putting it back in. The fire truck takes, I believe, about 12 months once it's ordered 
So if the council got all their information, was able to vote on it in August or September or even July, I don't know when Craig's plan on presenting it, um, we wouldn't get the actual fire truck until the next budget cycle. And we've already been discussing it with our uh, financial advisors or advisors about some kind of loan and, and lease payment. So that, that would be forthcoming to you. It's already been presented to the finance committee um, a couple of different times and they've had, had some questions and Craig's gone back and forth to be able to answer their questions. So I believe that will be coming to you shortly. But doesn't the age of the fire truck have some sort of uh, expiration or you lose certification or something like that with the certain age of the truck? If Doral and Craig could answer that. The age of a fire truck, you could potentially lose certification or lose some sort of accreditation. That's not true. Okay. Chris, I, okay. I heard that. All Chris, right. I have a question. So it appears to me that we were able to put things back into this budget, um, fire truck included, that we had taken out of last year's budget. And um, the only real increase is is that litigation attorney fees from thirty thousand to one hundred and thirty two thousand. That really is the biggest difference in this fifty thousand dollar budget difference from last year to this year. Those, those are the the big points. Yes, the one hundred thirty two for the attorney, the fifty thousand for the fire truck, about fifteen thousand for the auger system. Um, those are some of the big ones. Now, if we took all those away. We wouldn't have to take the 277 out of savings that been projected up here. It would be more in the hundred thousand dollar range. However, uh, we're still taking out of savings. Correct. We're still not collecting enough revenues to cover our needs, or we're not cutting enough in the budget um, and saving. Okay. Sometimes it's hard to have this deficit spending where we're relying on our savings to run our city. But we understand that we're not, we're at a place where we're not collecting enough revenue. Um, we appreciate everyone buying more things online because that did increase our budget by fifty thousand, which is very significant, especially when we're talking. That's that's the down payment for the fire truck. <laughs> so, you know, we're we're a growing city, and we need to find um, solutions. But uh, I think that you've done a really good job of getting it to that zero base um, and keeping us in, in line with what our services, uh, what services we provide to our city and where we need to uh, maintain or increase uh, for those services. And I don't know, I'm having a brain cramp, but it seems to me that when we were doing this, Chris, we had a plan to get us out of having to use fund balance in the future, a plan forward. And I can't remember what that was. I think it started a couple of couple years ago with trying to keep up with inflation and the property tax. Really the property tax increased to 770,000 is roughly right. new builds plus 3% ish. Um, and so if we can maintain Keeping up That's at right. least with inflation or getting a little bit above it, we should be able to beat this curve in a few years. Chris. And that's one thing maybe our residents don't realize is that we don't get an, autom an automatic to increase our budget for inflation. That's why we have to have the truth and compensation. So it's important to note that's because right. sometimes you don't think about that that has to be added in just to maintain status quo. Yes. That Yes. So, so. In fact, we often get the opposite. Like this time, mm -hmm. I mean, they're a ten thousandth of a percentage off, right? Out, and they still have us thirteen thousand less than right. last year. Right. So right. Thirteen thousand less than last year. So I think that that's um. So we are aware of the fact that we are dipping into the fund balance, but we do have a plan to get us out of that pattern by holding our taxes, the actual tax revenues a little more steady and and increasing a little bit by the cost that increased to us also. Well, Chris, thing, would you oh, go ahead? I say one thing's been brought up in the past 
and I know you guys are aware of this, but is the fixed income several of many of our residents are on. So it's kind of a, a, a tricky balance to make sure that we're not chasing people out of their homes, but yet we're also not putting the city into bankruptcy. So I just, you know, once again, that's why you guys are all wise and knowing how to best balance this out. This is why I would specifically regarding the budget, maybe the truth in taxation hearing can be this. I, I would love to hear from the residents. You know, we talked about earlier how are we a small city or are we a big city? You know, again, I, I, love, the fa I love seeing it when residents pitch in and, you know, sweep rocks off the road or go up and collect garbage. I mean, that's, and I'm speaking personally, that's the city I really love and I like. Um, but are we going to need a city engineer? Are we going to need a um, constant right. legal services? Are we going to need, you know, uh, we've already got Jody going full time now. We've got two other helpers, um, which part of that is because of the building, which is significant. Nobody should underestimate how much time that building takes. So building is signif a significant hit. Um, other other things have been a hit, but I, I, you know, if the residents are okay with us staying small city, then I think we can follow the plan that you've outlined. But if we get significant pushback saying no, we think the city needs to have more professional services, then that would change the the equation. At that point, we need to think about okay, right. well, fine, then. That just means that just means a different approach to our tax rate. The, well, and and the tricky thing I think is that people that are generally content content with how things are aren't worked up enough to show up at a meeting and comment. And then people that are frustrated beyond belief often are also not going to show up and make comment because they feel like they're not going to be heard. So you've got both of those, and then you have the people in the middle that are irritated for one reason or another, and they come, and understandably so, I'm not complaining about that. I mean, they should, but then it's very hard for us to discern all well, the people that aren't there. Is it because they're really happy, or is it because they're just so frustrated they can't, they just don't, they feel like mm -hmm. it's not even worth participating, and mm -hmm. so then, so it's up that's a tricky part of trying to get the public. So then let me invite every person listening to let us know in the next month via email, via text, via phone call, right. whatever. Let us know what your vision for the city is. I and let's invite them to ask a couple of their neighbors to also. Yeah, I want to, I want to well, hear that. And I think it's I important to note that you know, that both of those positions are professional positions and that requires a professional wage, but then they become public employees. And so with that, there is some statute and what uh, benefits and retire, state retirement, et cetera, that goes along with that. We don't pick and choose what well, those things are. And I think that's an important thing to note in the overall hiring of two two professionals and as, as city employees we could certainly contract mm -hmm. some of the services so i i, I well, don't i don't want to make it seem like a, a, i think no matter what we would still try and do it in a fiscally responsible of way of course but, but just I to do be real feel that we need to have some input what is your vision for the city yes Mm -hmm. I think that's important. I just think that we need to be real on what that, what the costs of, of, um, of potentially growing. I mean, there is growing pains as we move that we have a lot of growing pains moving from a town to a city. And now we're a small city. We're the same size as Orangeville, which most people don't even know where Orangeville is, but, uh, you know, we're that same size and yet we have no commercial base. They do. Um, when we go around and, and compare ourselves to other cities, we tend to look to cities in our, in our area, you know, Salem or Spanish Fork or Provo, which have significantly different structures. And so 
I think that's an important part to to decide when we look at what is the vision for our city and how do we expect to pay for that vision, or are we okay with where we're at with little increases to to maintain? So just to be real with people too on what that means. If the city council just on the on the higher side of things, if you guys wanted to go back to maybe like the two thousand fourteen certified tax rate, which is about a five. 0.005262, that would get us almost a million dollars in revenue and not have to take anything from savings. I don't know what that would do to individual homeowners and how much it would raise, you know, if it's $400 a home a year or $1,000 a year home. I, I don't have those that information at my fingertips right now. And I don't think that would include the stakes that would be tried to, to be put on us. To, that's too high. Yeah. Yeah, it well, is pretty high. I'm hopeful that, I mean, the biggest increase is in the attorney's fees. Mm -hmm. In the what? In the attorney's fees. Well, well, yeah. I'm hopeful, without any evidence otherwise, <laughs> that we won't have to spend that much money. So that, that kind of hope is called blue sky. <laughs> That's right. It is. I agree. I, I agree. I, I, I just, I'm I think it's healthy. I think to be fiscally that. responsible, we have to budget for it. We do. But I, I agree with you. I have, I just hope that we don't. And I, I'm hopeful that we can come to a better resolution so that we're not doing this. Yeah. I think, I, I, again, you know, we, we've talked about getting together, mediating that kind of thing. And we've, made attempts in that direction i would just continue to encourage well, being open to those attempts when we actually have people that are when we have ideas that we think we can come to agreement on if i could just ask the council on a new topic here to consider two things in the public safety arena up here um i don't know when but we we are gaining and we have the expertise in our city to transport an ambulance, you know, and get people out of here quicker. That would increase the 4225110. And, and I don't know by how much, but we budgeted for this one year and we took it out due to COVID. And now we, we need to remember that that could start at some point. And uh, the second thing I would request is can, to... Can I stop you there and just please, respond yeah, to that? Yeah. I have talked to Beth okay. at fairly at, at decent, and she's just not sure we're ready. Right now we are, but we've seen the pattern in the city, and in a year and a half we may not be. She wants to make sure that we're going to be ready She's, in a stable fashion over the long term. Cautiously optimistic. Yes, okay. yes. So she okay. does want to get to that point, okay. and it is a goal, but she's not quite sure we're really ready yet. Okay. And does that make sense? And she's comfortable with waiting okay. for now. Okay. But That's... I do think it's important for us to remember that when it's time, that is going to be a cost. And then. And, and didn't she say that most of it, though, would pay for itself because uh, people would get maybe. charged for that? For oh, that that's the hope fee. they do but, that's the but hope. salem doesn't make a lot of money on their due to wages and costs oh, and so on so it does they don't break even then no okay yeah. to be honest with you i don't see them and i think that's a big what money she's on also that. Realizing it, so um, that so anyway i but i do want you to know that i have had that conversation and hopefully excellent, it's excellent hopefully i'm hearing what she's really and saying think, and i'm not making up I what think i want you have. i think i've heard the same thing i just know that someday and yes. then the other thing that I'm really sad about is seeing this budget and seeing 4220-0. Fire you, grant? If we don't know, no, the fire appreciation oh. that, that used to be 1500 oh. has gone Did to zero. Did we not zero. budget anything for this next year, Chris? I thought we had. Um, hmm. That could I guess be we're relying on another private donor. Yeah, I'm not sure mm. how that happened. And I, and I don't want to do that. I, yeah. I don't think that tells our firefighters that they're appreciated. That the city appreciates them. Well, that it, all the citizens. it really doesn't. Yeah. Right, that's so, what I'm saying. Yeah, so I, I don't know. I, and I don't want to change this if it's close to being 
set, but but I caution us in in trying to put oh, something think, back in there. I appreciate you bringing that. Yeah, that's I agree. Important. Well, and I thought I don't know how that happened actually, okay. because I, I thought think, we talked about it putting it in. Yeah. So, the, the, yeah, my my thought I talked about a little bit because I'm going to end up probably moving out of maintenance and just move it down into that category. No, 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 no. Okay. Let's, think... let's not hide stuff. Let's talk just about changing it. So when we talk about it. But it wasn't, I didn't want to increase the budget. Uh, okay. I don't think that it's going to make a big difference. Well, okay. Um, yeah, but I think. So, the, so, Chris, you're saying that you can put, we can take the 1500 out of a different fire account than this right. one? Mayor has so a the 1500 will still be there. It will just be coming out of a different silo. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Okay. Let's be clear. The way we should do that right. is move the money as part of the budget, not right. spend money out of one budget item for another budget item. That right. That's not right. the right way to do it. Right. So the mayor has authority to move within um, the public safety. She has authority to move it from line item to line item without council. And so that was my thought is we could just talk to her. You know, pass yeah. the boot. And maybe not get it all, but they would get some. And get pass the boot would be a great idea. An opportunity yeah. as well as recognition. Right. Just a thought. It's a good idea. Okay. Yeah, pass good the idea. boot. All right. Just, I just wanted the council to be aware of what the budget looks like. Thanks, Craig. Craig is super um, conscientious. Well, since the city doesn't appreciate the firefighters, they're only there because they like their chief. <laughs> That's a pretty good deal. Glad he didn't hear me. Okay. They are. It'll go to his our, our emergency responders are phenomenal. There's more about that later, but yeah. Anyway, go ahead, Doral. Did you have anything? No, else? not anymore. Okay. No, not after that. Okay, further questions or discussion on this issue? Because I don't want to just sit around and beat a dead horse, but I want to make sure you have time to get all of your concerns or the only thing I answered. I would be interested in considering um, some negotiation around that certified tax rate. Like how would you, what do you want? Let's talk, let's do it now <laughs> before. Well, you know, here's the hard part is the reason why the certified tax rate is going down is because our home values are going up. Mm -hmm. Right. So the hard part is I don't want to just say, let's use the same certified tax rate we had last year, because since our home values are going up, that means a net increase in taxes. Right. And, mm -hmm. and for some more than others. So I think there's right there's a happy place somewhere in the middle where we're still roughly keeping individual homeowners taxes the same but again I keep mentioning this the, the way that we recover from these new homes that are being built and is by keeping our certified tax rate as as level as we can and I know that that's a hard balance to find but <laughs> Exactly. It's, it's it's something that okay. Well, it's I'd minimal, like to toy with but that. we are proposing a lower certified tax rate than last year, but it's not much lower. Right. As a certified tax rate. Yeah. But yes. It, but on the other hand, we do need to increase our revenues a bit because our expenses are going up a bit. Yeah. And that's why inflation. we're falling into the hole every year. Inflation. And so we do have to increase the revenues. But I agree with you. We need to find the sweet spot where we're not pricing people out of the city. Right. We don't want to do that. We have good long-term and short-term citizens that love the city and are willing to do what they can, but they are on fixed incomes or their salaries just aren't increasing at the same rate of inflation either, you know, and we don't want to price those people out, but we have to, the reason we're in the position we are, I mean, the reason we have a, 40 year old water system that we didn't really have much money to replace is because we just ran on the shoestring for years and years, which was a considered decision. And that, you know, that's what was decided. But then you take the big hit when you have to replace the water system, you know. So it's hard to find that sweet spot because we, yeah, we, and we need to find out. 
do people up here really want to say, yeah, we want to, we're willing to pay through the nose for more amenities or we want to live in a place where people throw sandbags in their potholes themselves and don't wait for the city to come around and fix it. You know, and I agree with you, that's the city I moved into. Um, but there are people that are moving here now that hold different opinions. So anyway, if we did the four, three, four, five, like we did last year, the certified tax rate, it would bring in roughly $801,000. If we kept it consistent with last year's tax rate. Tax rate. Tax rate, would, rate yes. It would get a, a, an additional 101000 No, so it, just up to one hundred one. Uh, it'd be just over $801,000. So currently they're proposing seven hundred and twenty. If we do the seven hundred and seventy thousand that that's being proposed tonight, that would be a tax rate of that four one eight zero. But so if we did tax about, about fifty thousand dollars more, if we held the certified tax rate the, the same. same, the same, which would allow us to take less out of savings, right? Yes, but roughly fifty thousand dollars. So one thing you need to consider tonight, if you do want to look at potentially getting more than the $770,000, you need to vote to do the certified tax rate tonight and a higher rate. Doesn't mean you have to adopt the higher rate. You can always go lower. But if we get to August and we say the certified tax rate of 0.481 or 4180, and you guys want 0.4345, that you won't be able to do that. We can come down, we can't go up. Correct. Right. So do we want to maintain for this? third year in a row, the same tax rate, or do we want to come down? I think a lot of it has to do with education of our citizens as to where their tax dollars are really going. And that's kind of the analysis that I've- So they can make that, a fair decision a, on whether they're willing to pay? Yeah. Yeah, I agree. You know, I, I, I did an analysis and and uh, prepared to share that we can kind of see what what that wants to tell us but it's it's not designed to tell us that uh, we need to raise taxes but it's more of a educational uh, viewpoint so tonight we don't have okay. to adopt this budget but what we have to say is if we're going to have a truth and taxation hearing, and then we can always back off of it. With the rate, though, we have to, we do have to adopt it with that, with the whichever rate, which we can come down from, right. but we can't right. go up from. Right. And we do need an operating budget to work on starting July 1. So that's why I think we should pass right. this tentative, uh, regardless of what you're, well, either full fledged budget, and we need to adjust revenues down and expenses down if you're not going to consider truth and taxation, or if you are in this tentative budget, that'll give us something to operate on for the next two months. I think that we need to be uh, looking at truth and taxation. Me too. So do you, Chris, recommend that we hold steady with last year's rate or that we change and, and come into the, to the 770? That's what Chris it just depends on do you want to keep do you want to take money out of savings or not we've, we've been kind of all over our tax rates the past eight years but they're all in the for the most part they've been in the 0.43s to the 0.52 range i can pull that screen back up if that would be helpful as you can kind of see the history so, so chris and i basically are recommending the 770 mm -hmm. and using income and using our our fund base right. or our set our right. savings but if, but if you as a body want to do something different you are certainly we can you know we can make that move that 770 turns out to be uh, basically 418 right 0. 00418 is that right chris yeah and that that has us using 212 no. of our savings Yes. And if we if we have it maintaining um, the certified tax rate that we've had for the last two years, then we're using 150 of basically out of our That's savings. That's 
what I know we would increase it by 150 we wouldn't have enough in savings at this point to do that well no she's saying if we if we use the higher rate that we oh. mentioned, then then our then our savings withdrawal would go down a hundred grand basically correct I thought you were talking about the 721 thousand no the state no I was and, talking and, about the fund balance and so yeah. how much do we have in savings in effect about so oh, right. the year's going to end, but it started out about five hundred sixty thousand dollars without this final number. Um, oh, about five sixty, and we're looking at pulling out two two twenty, two twenty. Yeah. But he also did so say that we'll have half. we'll have under half. We'll have some expenses that come out of this budget and this fund balance okay. towards clear to August. Yeah. But, so there but, could be less. Yeah. So think about this current years that we've proposed in the 2021 budget, plus now what we're proposing in the next year, really, if it came down to it, that would only leave us, if we use both of those, that would leave us only about hundred grand in savings. Yeah. We're not gonna use it all, but. However, but. however, we've taken a lot of money out of the fund balance and put it into capital, capital projects. Savings That again. used to just sit in the fund balance. Yes. A hundred thousand isn't very much if no, we had an not. emergency. Mm -hmm. We had well, a real emergency. How hard would it be able to uh, put those numbers together of how much is in capital outlay plus savings minus this two sixty six or two twenty? Because we couldn't use the capital what, outlay what would for that any accomplish for you. Yeah. How at the rate that because we're going since it's in capital fund we can't use we can't it for use wages. it i understand that but or anything can't. else but but it gives us history on on how much we had and now we've we've spread it out and so we we have artificially lowered what we have in savings so so just one clarification everything that's going into the savings we've talked about the next council can change all that around and spend all the money it's not locked in so this is just what this council is doing yeah, at 50,000 said it can be pulled right yeah. back out. Yeah, they could take it out of capital, but it would require public hearings and everything else because once it's dedicated to capital, uh, I don't know if it would take it's supposed to it's... stay in there unless it's it can't just be say willy nilly. You can't just pull it out of capital. For and no for reason. what it's worth, that was actually intentional. Uh, yes, right. Right. exactly. So we we decided that we wanted to again, it's all a matter mm -hmm. of trying to be more transparent. So right. look, here's where that money is. It's dedicated towards fire, it's dedicated towards snow plow, mm -hmm. whatever. And, and I Which think is an important aspect. That's good, good to do. So if we have this higher rate, we're getting what, $50,000 more. And hopefully that would offset 50,000 that we're not pulling out of savings. Mm -hmm. No, I mean, that's, yeah, yeah. The, the 770 is what we're proposing. That includes pulling 220 out of savings. Right, and he's talking about the so higher. 70, if, we, if, we, if we maintain right. the, the right. same well, I, rate I, that I we have now. I thought you were proposing the, the 721. No, that's no. what the county is proposing. That's the county's proposing and, that to and us. And so then, I mean, what, what, what rate did we have two years ago? Is that what I heard? The last two years, we've had the same rate. The last two no. years. No, they've, it's been different. No, yeah. Oh, I thought we made, we voted to maintain the previous year's rate last year. Last year, we voted to we, try and maintain. Yeah. Well, we may maintain the dollars, not the rates. Correct. Well, we tried to keep the rate steady, but we we came close. Yeah, we came really yeah, because, close. Because the county never tells we, us. We all have to realize that, you know, you it, it's kind of like calculus. You yeah. can never reach the asymptote. Yeah. 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 Exactly. <laughs> and so, <laughs> I don't know so, why so, that so what, seems what, so what funny. Is, what, is it a, what are the options we have? We have the certified rate. Oh. We have the proposed from the mayor and Chris, and, and then we anything else you want. Yeah. You but you but do we have a sense of where well, we want to go? What What are you saying? So, Chris? The highest amount the city of Woodland Hills could collect is just shy of $1.3 million if you want to raise the rate all the way up, just so you know the high end of it. 0.425. It's 0 0.07 uh, above what, it, what they're proposing, but we can always back down. Okay. But once we say so this, you can't go up. So so put that in there, Chris. Point which yeah. one? 
0425. Which is what we had last year? Is that what you're saying? No, no, it's, it's still lower than last year. But I'm just thinking let's go a little bit above. Well, what and let's go, suggesting. go back to the chart, Chris. Just show us quickly what's on the chart. We're missing a year because, see, this, that's fiscal year 2020. We don't have fiscal year 2021 on there. They, they do it differently. So, yeah, this yeah, was the county goes January. That is January. really fiscal year 2021. We're even at 425. We're still you know, quite yeah. a bit lower. Okay, now go back to the. So, we can do the county rate. We I can like, do like the Paul's, proposed rate. Yeah, go back to your generation. Or we can do. Okay. I like what Paul's headed. That gains us another 13,000. Well, I think it. It'll actually reach out more based upon earlier answers, and that is, is that all of the new construction that will yeah. start participating in paying the, their their uh, developed tax rate versus the undeveloped will increase that some more. No matter what we do, it'll keep, increase it more. Keep in mind, the thing with construction, it is that the construction industry is staffed with. Mm. And mm -hmm. costs. Costs. So, yeah, we're slowing down a little. Well, no, but 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 we have homes that are that <clears throat> that are already built, and and we have occupancy in it, but it's not sh reflecting in that yet, and that's what I'm talking about. <clears throat> and homes that are being built that are going to be completed. That's correct, but but whether or not they'll be done in time right. to fit that to fit this budget, I don't know. Most of them, yeah. I don't know what that magic deadline right. is. Yeah, county budget yeah. versus municipal that budget. They're on different so I, time I, zones. Tax rate. I, I, I say we, mm -hmm. we, we consider what Paul's recommending. Because we can always come back down. Well, so now go back one more time to the chart. Okay, so last year it was... Right. Four, four, three, four. four, three, four, five. Do you want to take it to that? And then come down? Four, three, four, five? What, what does four, three, five do? Four, three, four, five. Just keep in mind, like, uh, I think the four, I think, two, five just increases by 13,000. Yeah. So you, I, you're, you're, you're not it's really. It's not really going anywhere. It's not huge. Yeah. I mean, that's another 20. 30. That's a 30 from, from what yeah. I'm which, yeah. you, you gotta, I what you got to do, rather than just, again, you, it's it's really hard to use these numbers as a scalpel. It really right. is a blunt instrument, and you got to realize that. And what? just so a better question, Bob, is what's your goal? The goal is, is to reduce what we're taking out of savings. That's okay. the goal, and that's fine. That's that's fair enough. So then, what you can do is you can say, okay. Well, what would the rate have to be so we took zero out of savings? Well, that, that's unrealistic. I that's agree with you. High, yeah. I very much agree with you. So then you have to ask yourself, okay, then what's your goal? So, you know, again, rather than worrying about like a few dollars here or a few percentage points here or there, I think what's that, your goal? And then work in reverse. Okay, well, the numbers if, in, in my mind, the, the perfect scenario that probably is still unrealistic would be around 175-ish, but I don't think we're going to get there. And so we're probably, and that's why we're kind of playing this what if thing is so we can kind of figure out it, you know, what, what, what do we think we can tolerate? Yeah, because I think there's a few things that, that are fair goals. So what I hear is over here is what if we just kept the same 0.43 whatever rate that we've had this last year. That's a fair goal, okay? Yes. That's, that's, that's a legitimate goal. Another one is, what if we were to go to 0.425 and that would be, you know, whatever it would be. And then you're saying, what if we only took 170 out of savings instead? So that gives us three what if scenarios. That's good. That's a smaller than sitting here and just changing it mm -hmm. a whole bunch. So we can plug those numbers in and see what yeah, what that's saying? what I was doing. Yeah. Well, I also think then overall, our one what is one of our goals that we get to the point of zero deficit spending, that we actually have the revenue that covers our expenses because every year, always coming out of our savings, 
is not really being realistic with our residents. Even though we're transparent, it's not realistic on what it costs to run this city. And so if our goal is to get to zero, how many years will it take us to do that and so, maintaining where we're at? And, and let me just also point out one thing. And I'm going to get in trouble for this, but just by decreasing our legal expenses, we will save more than anything we're talking about now. Oh, yeah. Unless we have to hire an internal attorney or and or city of engineer in engineer so you know those are so, two aspects of maybe the future as well uh, just to state chris and i really did a lot of this together like doing this like what if we increase the tax rate this much oh. you know we really ran through that over and over and and the numbers that we came up with were the numbers that he and i felt <laughs> like the residents could tolerate will move us toward our goal eventually even though it may not be as quickly as we want but we you know and so this that's how we came to this recommendation but he's the employee and I'm the mayor one voice if you guys feel like we you know that it needs to be shifted then this is a you know it's perfectly reasonable and it's and and we're good with that but that that's how we came to our recommendation. We kind of did this, kind of trying to figure out the tolerance levels of all of these things. So um, th those are good things for you guys to work on also. I do think that there is wisdom and kind of what Paul's saying is that maybe we need to take our topmost tolerance level and approve it tonight so that we can mm -hmm. come down from there. Mm -hmm. um, but it's up to you guys. So. And one other thing to consider is, is the inflationary. I, I know Paul brought that up with roads and those kind of things. The inflation costs on the roads are 20, what, 25%. So we're, we're sort of raising a little bit here to make inflation, but. Yeah, we're not really keeping up. No, we're not, not. with construction inflation. Right? With regular inflation, grocery inflation, maybe, but not construction inflation. And we did try to put some of that in, but it's impossible to predict what it is. It's hard. We have, we have to be careful trying to compare against this year's inflation and construction because that cannot be sustained. Right. Right. <clears throat> right. And I think sustainability is something that is important for us. No, but he's, saying, he's saying that inflation is mm, not going to be yes, sustained. Yes, it's right. not. So, so the, those costs are going to come down and, we're, and because they're going to come down when the supply chain starts meeting the needs, We'll, we'll see construction costs come down and construction go up. But what about in, uh, costs for uh, our internal um, construction and or infrastructure projects? Those we know have gone up this year. I mean, sure. things that we, but so we'll have I'm to always is, consider is, that is in inflation is that supply chain may correct itself with residential and it may or may not correct itself with as I would say, commercial or infrastructure on city costs. We need to just keep keep that as um, an open mind as well. Yeah, sure. I agree with that. There was a big hit taken in 2013. I can't remember if that was Steve was mayor at that point, but we almost we got the point zero zero six two, and that was a huge, but that got us closer to breaking even. Um, that year, I, I, I can't remember who mayor was at that point, but I mean, that was just huge. I remember was making a few newspapers and all that kind of stuff. So 13, yeah, 2013, that really, um, Steve. took a bite. Well, I shouldn't say Steve, it was the council that voted on, not the mayor, but, um, right. it was his proposed budget. Yeah. Probably. And then it just kind of, kind of dropped from there. I mean, dropped quite a bit. Um, I think um, I'd like to point out that almost every year he tried to get us to increase and we and the council resisted. <laughs> well, but again, that may not have been a bad strategy. Right, right. To keep in place with inflation. Do it a little bit yeah. of time rather than one. Well, that was his strategy in the council. Well, he was a businessman too, so I think he understood maybe a yeah. little bit more than... Then, so I, I know, I mean, in hindsight, I was on that council and I was resisting him and I could see the wisdom in what he was trying to do. Yeah, I mean, 
the hard part is unpredictability. Mm -hmm. um, I think I think residents are willing to support maintaining the city. They just don't want unpredictability. Right. Well, and we've had three things this last, well, four things that were unpredictable this last year, you know, COVID, roads, water, and increased legal fees. Those were all unpredictable last year at this time. Yeah. Anyway, um, I, think I don't know if we need to like come to a decision, but I know where I'm going to vote, so. Well, I mean, I it can, would be good now to move. just kind of get an idea because otherwise we're going to do it in the meeting. I'm good with Paul's plan. Oh, I am too. Mm -hmm. okay. So we're going to call that the Paul budget. We're going to let Paul make the motion. The MacArthur budget increase. General MacArthur. The, the, MacArthur, the MacArthur tax the, increase. The, 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 yeah, tax, tax hike by Paul. Paul's taxes. <laughs> okay. But yeah. All right. So I think we can move on because we are super late. So let's move on and get through the rest of this work session as well. So update on the on the issuance of additional water revenue bonds. Okay. So Chris, do you just want to kind of tell them what we are um, going to add? Well, we're proposing. Well, we're going to add more money to our water revenue bonds. Um, I I'm authorized to do that. We have like enough money in the that we can add and the mayor's authorized to do it, but we want to let you know what we're doing and why. And if you've got some heartburn, this is a great time to let's talk about it. Is that so, why Mark seconds. Anderson is on? Yes, it is. Yes. So is, is that why Mark Anderson's here to talk to us about those that issuance of increasing bonds? Yes. yes. All over the state tonight. So this is we're very lucky to have you jump on with us. Yes, thank you, Mark. <laughs> and uh he probably needs to be unmuted. There, we, there go. we go. Thank you. Yes, I was able to drive from North Ogden home uh, while I was listening to the city council meeting. So we're, we're you wouldn't sorry. have gotten video if you'd have been quicker. <laughs> you could have made it to St. George by the time we're done. <laughs> I appreciate we really appreciate you being allowing me to join in this manner. Um, just real quickly, last year, the city council adopted a parameters resolution that allowed the city to issue bonds up to $3 million. And in visiting with bond council in the state of Utah and the state of Utah's uh, advisor, they believe that the action that was taken is, is satisfactory, that it doesn't require any more council action because you've got $2,600,000 worth of bonds that are subject to repayment in the first tranche and we're proposing an additional 369,000 that are repayable in the second uh, round that has an additional $41,000 worth of grant. So the combination of those two amounts is 2,969,000, which is under the $3 million amount. Uh, but uh, for the sake of transparency, you know, Chris and I thought that we wanted to make sure the council at least was mindful and. Uh, th this was happening and uh, be able to answer any questions. What we're proposing is that we would basically uh, reissue a new bond in the new amount and the other bond that's already been issued would be uh, uh, disposed of essentially. The payment uh, dates uh, would still be the same. It won't start I think till October 1st of 22 is the first payment date. And with the new bond amount, it adds $12,300 a year to the annual payment. Both loans are at 0% interest for a 30 year term. So uh, assuming the council's okay with moving that direction, it sounds like the mayor has the authority to make that decision. We would uh, be preparing the bond documents here in the coming week or so and would expect to close those bonds by the 10th of J July, which should be an adequate time to pay for any ongoing expenses you have with your contractors. He keeps working on the project. Questions? I know we talked about this 
in the, another council meeting, but um, are we still in a position to continue this bonding? Are we, uh, I know we were getting kind of tight in our numbers. As far as uh, ability to issue additional bonds? Is that the question? Yes. So we're looking at just at the water account right now, not the, the general account and the revenues we project we need a coverage of 1.25, if I remember right, 1.25, and we're above that right now, even with this new loan. So that's why I was talking earlier, we're gonna watch our revenues, especially what we collect over the summer during water usage and reevaluate it again in the wintertime. All right, thank you. So, yeah, I worked, with, I worked with Chris and we looked at the coverage ratios. We, uh, we expect it to be around three times coverage versus the 1.25 minimum required and uh, didn't feel like that it was really necessary to consider holding another public hearing to discuss a rate increase because we didn't see a need for that to maintain coverage. And I'd like to go back and emphasize the fact that we're increasing the bond, but it's still 0% interest, which, yeah, which is good. It's just it's, a, it's, it's it's gonna gonna cover any short. Falls. It is a miracle so for us. <laughs> Finish up the project that we're on. Yeah. Thank you, Mark. I'm glad to join. Uh, I look forward to seeing you good folks in person again someday. <laughs> Thanks, Mark. We don't look half as good in person. <laughs> yeah, we miss it. <laughs> oh, yeah, we miss your chocolate. All right. Any <laughs> other <laughs> questions or concerns about that? Otherwise, I'm going uh, to. It's in North Ogden. <laughs> yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll figure out a way to get you taken care of so so we're not taking we're not taking any action in the main meeting because i can do it myself yeah. if you've got concerns now's the time for you to bring them up so no concerns, okay no concerns. all right let's move on um consideration of water recommendations concerning the current drought okay this is the issue we've got. <laughs> we have a drought. We have a governor that's calling for everybody to conserve water. We do not get our water from reservoirs. So the drought really is not impacting our water source. However, we wanna be good citizens, but we also need, if we got everybody up here to drastically reduce their consumption, it's not really gonna help the drought and it would significantly hurt us because we're trying to pay back well, money for and, our infrastructure. And the other issue sense? is I had a talk with him about this and I and and we we were discussing and I said you got to remember mountain communities such as, as ours have a, a higher fire uh, threat and so for us we want our citizens to Irrigate. adequately oh, irrigate green. not to go overboard but yeah. to adequately irrigate to help us have that buffer yeah. and so he agreed right <laughs> and so i think that's part of it is is our balance that we need to have of being conservative and yet being realistic and in our threat so we're looking at waste right is there a way because uh, here's the experience i have this week okay for probably four or five days, I would go out, and, and where the water comes in, I kept hearing water running. So I go check around, the sprinkle on. No, I, maybe it's in the house, but that's not part of this. I was just confused. So finally, I just went out and looked at everything. Well, I found that I had a valve that had popped free, and it was just draining water down. And that's waste, pure and simple waste. And you pay for it. And I'll pay for it. <laughs> Is there a way that, that there's some, I can get on some registry or something that says, Hey, you're 20% above usage. Because it's usually going to be something like that. Right. First pipe. That's something we could do. We do that. Know. We don't, do, well, do we continue well, to do that? Um, I mean, I know that Patty uh, used to do Patty it. Did. So will will Lori con continue to do that? Uh, Jody? Okay. Well, and I don't know where so, the point is, the tipping point at which they say, hey, your water use is way over. We yeah. ha I had have, I have a citizen that contacted me this last week that said he and his wife are running a analysis on their water to find out where their usage is and what where the tipping points are going to be from deer to deer 
and with the increases and oh, where you know like okay. where they can afford to Smart. irrigate and where they're not and and offering to provide that to us that we can run for other citizens in the city and it he could do it he could do it without knowing who they are you know um but again we have a little bit of that like if, no. if everybody just well and here's the other thing you're talking about waste but it's waste but it's going back into the ground which is going back into our aquifer that recharges our aquifer eventually it doesn't go back into our aquifer that's so true the same. Mm -hmm. so yeah that's true i i think that <clears throat> excuse me and this may be semantics <clears throat> Uh, but um, when we ch when we raised the water rates, <clears throat> what we did in effect, when it comes to conserving, is that we put into effect a long term plan that has natural consequences for waste mm -hmm. and for overuse, and so uh, it it is a self regulating process that uh, if you do have waste like paul's example when you get your bill you may have not heard it before but when you get your bill you're going to see hey this is a hundred or two hundred dollars more than it was last month why and then you go explore it because the rate is as high as high as it is <clears throat> and so i think that what we need to be doing is looking at promoting this rate all you know we've re we promoted it as necessary to get zero percent interest loans, bonds, but we can also say that it that it does the self-regulating on water consumption okay. with a tiered system. But if, I also if think you have it, information, right, right, right. You don't, right. you're never going to know right. until so, too late. All the time. I, I don't know. I, maybe maybe I feel differently, but I think we again. I'm very much in favor of letting the residents govern themselves. And I think if we give them the information, whether that's a Google spreadsheet they can plug in their numbers with or whatever, I mean, I don't see how that could be a bad thing. Right, I agree. So and, that's right. Well, and as far as, and let them, as, let far them as converse, conservation, what I would recommend is that we as a council Maybe perhaps uh, pass a what is it a resolution? It's not binding. Resolution. A non-binding resolution. But and it's ask our citizens to maybe only water three days a week, but let them figure out what three days that works for them with their sprinkler system, or I mean, or yeah. you know, or every other day, three days, and or during certain hours of the day. Because, you know, it is a little frustrating when you drive around and see somebody that's watering at three in the afternoon. Which you know, my husband has been guilty of. Well, <laughs> I, think, I think that that's a, a reasonable thing to do is to say, hey, you know. A proclamation. Wa wa water water yes. during these, these, do not water during these times and li limit to three days a week or whatever, whatever the, the magic threshold is. I don't. I don't think there's any need to water four days a week, but I think three days is a is a good one. And I think letting people decide what three days that is. I don't think, based upon what I've heard from Corbett, that we have an a uh, a demand uh, on one day of the week or whatever that that we need to to turn to worry about. Corbett. I. I. Corbett. Right, right now, right now, the well is running about twenty hours a day. Um, it would help if if you ask them to do it in an organized way. Even numbers, even number of houses, even number of days, odd number of houses, odd number of days, only because not that we're not that we're short on water, but the infrastructure, if we don't have to turn on the booster pump and start paying for the Navy Canyon well, then we're saving quite a bit of money by just using the other well. Okay, that, that's, well, that's good information. Yeah. Effort, then it, it actually does make a difference on the pump run time. But if you have well, an automatic sprinkler system, can you set it up so that it, you can say only water on odd number of days of the week? Yes. Okay. It depends on how many. Because, well, because we need to give a simple enough 
yeah. thing that people can set up and let go because they're it's it's I think it's not reasonable for us to ask them to do something that they're going to help have to go out and readjust their sprinklers all the time. They're just not going to do it. Right. And I don't blame them. They've got life Well, going and I, on. I like what David said in letting people govern themselves with this because we do have a tiered water rate that if they want to use more, they pay for more. Right. I know that in the past we've had people who don't use as much because their, their um, landscaping doesn't need it. We also have people who have just moved in and have just put in their new trees and brand new trees need water to every single day or they die. And that's a significant investment on some of those peop people in their homes um, to water a little bit more frequently. And so I think, you know, a resolution saying the odd and even days, if you can, we want you to adequately water for for fire danger but we also want you to be thoughtful in in conservation and corbett did you have another comment yeah the you talked about information um, last year we did it we tried to do a test with the antenna here we upgraded the meter reader system that we have um i tried to do a test it was very crude we just took a bunch of cement tool handles and put them together and put the antenna up above the building. Figured we got the antenna about 18, 18 buildings. And we could read 5% of the meters in here. Now, if we do that, if we install an antenna on the building here, and we can read 95% of the meters, you can tell people every day how much water they use. You can, it'll, it'll, it'll read. Whenever you, whenever you read, it'll read. So it will automate distribution of that information? Yeah. Except well, for those 21. Yeah. <laughs> if you can gather the information. Now, I talked to Wade about putting an antenna on this building. And there is no restriction for a public facility. As far for as height. As far as antenna height. Um, I don't want to make that decision on my own, but I would like to put a fully foot antenna on this building. So that we can gather that information. Put that on the agenda. I, I, I think that's, I mean, if I had a way to go, and, and even if I had to go in and log in and do yeah, it, I, think it'd be cool. I would do it periodically and just say, how, what's going on? And Where's my like, water rate? Um, the, the other thing I want to mention. I do is, that on my solar. Yes, there's, there are also, and, and this is why I, I get nervous about the even odd, whatever thing. There are smarter um, controllers nowadays. And so, for instance, if we do by chance get some rain on Thursday, then it'll shut off my system for a couple of days. But then it's going to resume. And now, is it an odd or is it an even day? Right. <laughs> so, well, that's why I kind of like the idea of, of asking people try to water three days a week or less. Yeah. And I'd, then it lets I'd them. Rather just now, I I don't disagree with what Corbett's saying either. I mean, I, I yeah. get how. You know, if every resident watered all of their lawn Friday morning from six to nine, that's a problem. So the randomness kind of helps spread things a little more even. Um, but so I, I also wonder that, if maybe what we could do is get information from Corbett. You know, try just saying just water, you know, no, no more than every three days or whatever see if that works randomly enough. And if it doesn't, if we've got a problem with people hitting one day more than another, then we can get that information out as well. well then I think if we said to people, you know, we found that we're having problems because, of, because we're having days that are too heavy and days that aren't, can we try this? Then I think people would be willing. They're willing to go out of their way when there's a good reason, but I think, I, I sort of agree that I think it'd be better just to start out saying. I think three or four days. I think give them the opportunity to choose between the two um, because of, you know, like I said previous, the, mm -hmm. those that are brand new that might have new vegetation might feel that they need to do it at least every other day would be four days. And I think anytime we get information from the state, whatever, water district, whatever, if we can get that information out to the residents, put it out. Yes. And we did. We did on this last one. We we sent it out on Everbridge and on social media. Yeah. That, the that, proclamation from the that government. That kind of stuff is. I mean, the proclamation. 
if we actually got real information from the not to say that what the governor governor did wasn't real but just well, it I was think, a proclamation, right? Well, I think what he wanted to do was to give local authority more jurisdiction instead of a statewide mandate, which, which I which, which I, I appreciate. Love. Yeah, which I is what we want to turn around and do with our citizens. Right. That's right. Exactly. We want to do the same thing. We want to right. give them the information, give them a loose structure, let them make their good judgments because most of most of the citizens of our city are good citizens of the world. They really are. They want to. I mean, they want to recycle, they want, you know, they want to care for the earth. And that's one of the things that's drawn them to Woodland Hills is love of, love of nature and love, love of, of outside. Nature. And so I think, you know, to give them information and suggestions and let them figure it out is generally good. And then we can see if there's a problem, then we can say, okay, that's not working. So, so maybe two things to follow, to follow up, to wrap it up. One would be, can we agree that we can put something up that says, you know, we're asking mm -hmm. three days a week? Three or four. Okay. Three well, or let's four. Say, well, let's say uh, three. three two or they three. can do it. We're just asking. Let's say we're asking three. If you've got new vegetation or whatever, can we you, you have good judgment. Yeah. Do what you need to. Yeah. And then the second is, can we put on the on the agenda, maybe next time or the time after, a discussion about the big antenna so we can get that information yes. and make it available. But also, I think what hours of the day of watering is a yes. good recommendation. I think that's very important. Because that could also tell us that, could Nick Corbett? It would tell us not just use, but when. Yeah. I can say. Well, we but I think rec in, with our recommendation, three days a week and okay. preferably yeah. between yeah. these hours. Well, and just dumb little things like if Corbett could show a graph, and I'm betting our software does it, that shows, you know, how, what's the drawdown at various hours mm -hmm. of the day? If, if we just gave the citizens that information, they'd be able to see, oh, wow, between 6 and 9, oh, there's a lot of drawdown. Okay, I'm yeah. going to water at midnight. Right. right, and I can make a difference. Right. Did you get, so this is an action item on our agenda tonight, so we can actually, um, number 8, so we can actually take a vote on, mm -hmm. on a We could do recommendations, but not on the intent. No, right. just on the... Yeah. Corbett, will you and Jody get that on an agenda as soon as it's practical to do that? That'll be a right. hardware and a software yeah. issue. Yeah. Okay. Would we need a public hearing? No. Okay. Just... Do, on your water, not restrictions, but your water recommendations, do it scientifically. I mean, how much water are you put on the ground? Take a cup out there and, and just... Or a pan, something that's not going to blow away or, or get washed away with the ground, you know, the pressure. But how much water are you putting on your ground? How much do you really need? Are your sprinklers running? You know, are they putting five gallons? Are they putting a quarter inch of water? Um, and is that too much? Is that enough water every three days? But ask them to do it scientifically. Put a pan out there and let it, let it go for a cycle and see how much water you're putting on the ground. How much do you really need? Okay. All right. All right. Um, number 10, proposed resolution adopting a safety schedule. Jody? Appreciated that when I read it earlier. That are being proposed. I like the addition of the facility rental. I think those were needed. Cabinet filing is new. It is. Okay. Uh, That's $35. Funny. It's not yeah. much, but it does take care of mm -hmm. uh, printing of papers that we need to distribute, filing of financial disclosure statements. And it seems to be consistent with what other cities are charging. And the land use appeals, it says depending on extent of appeal, so 200 to 500, that will be based on hours or on what? It would be based upon how much is in the appeal. I mean, if you're appealing one or two things, it's not going to be taken as long. But if you're 
stealing 27 different items. So is that what I'm saying, I guess, is the 200 to 500, is that just arbitrary or is it based on uh, the, uh, the certain extent of the So the like deal. you said, two would be, two things would be 200, but 27 would be 500. That doesn't seem to well, really work out. Who makes that call? Yeah. I think we would allow the board to look at that and make the call or the chief financial which would be, be actually the city employees to determine what the cost of the city is. I mean, we're going to look at it and say, you know, is this really going to take us five or six hours, or is this going to take us 20, and are we going to have to bring in our attorney? Right, so is 500 enough <clears throat> if it if it gets to that range? No. No, it's not. No, and, is that, but, and I have a feeling that we might, in well, our current circumstances, 500 would not be enough. point to where a city has to provide a avenue or a service to residents who feel that they may have been treated unfairly or that they have a valid. But there's also a, an ability for us to say, this appeal is too broad. You have to break it up into smaller. So we can, somebody's not gonna really be able to come in with 27 or 30 things. We're going to say that's too broad. You're going to have to break it up into smaller. So I don't disagree with the money. I'm concerned about how it ends up getting administered. I think it's a little. I think 500 would be definitely. I think it's a little too interim. arbitrary. We, it, okay. So if we could, if we could just, again, on the city <laughs> schedule, it's probably good the way it is. But what we've got to do is we've got to put together a schedule that says, okay, this is what 200 looks like. This is what 300 looks like. This is what 400 looks like. This is what 500 looks Better like. Better define what So that it's very clear so that anybody coming in, you can hand them that and they can self figure out how much they're going to cost. Okay. Well, and I think but that we may might, be if, that it's, if it's more? more than 500, though, we might need to have a category that. Well, uh, but it may be that the city employees have to do an estimate of the time it's going to take and then give it to the person that's bringing the appeal in so then they can decide. I, I understand, but I'm saying we have to have it better defined. Right. But I'm saying it might, but it might, that is right. that is good. it might not be a clear list. It might be that when the appeal is given, the city employees will determine the time it will. Based on time. And then we'll give that information to the person making the appeal so then they can make a decision. That's that, fine. Would that be reasonable? I'm just concerned about it. I think that's a It great. could easily come up across this, as a right. Right. right, I agree. Right, that's what, that's what I was bringing that, up. 200 to 500 is a big difference. I agree, There's but... There's a general statement in there that time will be computed according to da 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 So that there's, there's a kind the, of catch-all there. The less, so, so that's what I'd like to see. Right, Maybe 100... Dollars per hour. Right. No, I, 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 I or two hours. I think I hear what you're saying. Every two hours. But I'm also saying, it. yeah, we can't make it too specific because then it becomes very hard to. Also yeah, but I, but I like but, the idea that yeah. you know, if this, if if it involves a consultation with the attorney, it's going to be five hundred for sure. Right. Right. Which yes. wouldn't even cover and, the one hour of the attorney. I just right. like to just go on record again as reporting. I mean, just saying. It makes my heart sad that people would assume that we have city employees and or city volunteers that are targeting them. We have people in our city that are seriously trying to serve everyone as fairly as possible and be objective in making sure that we have a safe, pleasant place for everybody to live. And this assumption that people have that they're being targeted is heartbreaking, you know? <laughs> It's just sad. Anyway, I just want to say that. I'm just sad about it, just like I'm sad about but it. But our policy should help us to carry that message. Yeah, I agree. And that's the part I'm concerned about with this. Not not the money amount or anything right. like that. It really is just... But trying to be but, clearly unarbitrary. Yeah. Right. Ranges right. are hard to, to enforce. Well, and I think that's why maybe the, it's a rate rather than a set fee, it's a rate based on hours. So, because if a city employee is taking it in and if it has to go to the 
the attorney, $500 does not cover both the attorney and all the time that our employees put in. So, Jody, can you make a note that we will need to develop a policy for our city policy manual on what, on how that rate is going to be determined and that it will be because we have other, in, under land use application, it's hourly late will be charged, you know, there. And and then some of the other ones, land use appeal then, depending on the extent of the appeal, which seems arbitrary. So, and then we had that somewhere else as well. And, and oh, over on the I, IBC, um, IRC mm -hmm. code, it's just depending on extent. So to me, it seems like maybe putting in an hourly rate, depending on, the extent of appeal would be more accurate and then our employees would be able to determine this will take me two hours, this will take me four hours, or this will take me six hours plus whatever the attorney time is. Okay. I don't is know. That, we got to move this meeting on I know, faster. I know. We are dying. Okay, Jody, we'll work on that and we'll come. I, can we approve? I mean, are you guys comfortable approving those? Yes. Um, things and then we'll work and on we'll developing work on a policy that's <clears throat> but we can't let that go we can't let that fall off the radar so we got to jody and i will have to keep that And it's and it's in line with other. It's in line with others. And the other thing I did was include map. We do not have a map anywhere that's published that shows which areas are charged that increased sewer. Yes. Oh yeah. The sewer that the city installed, and I felt that was important to put in. Mm -hmm. uh, so we have a record of it. Okay, that's great. Yeah. Thanks. Okay, any other questions about the fee schedule? All right, a request to film a movie at the water tanks. Corbett. I got a guy called me the other day that wants to film a movie at the water tanks. <laughs> I, I don't like the idea. I, I don't want to be, I mean, I don't want to be, you know, hard nosed about it, but at the same time, I don't I don't want people to notice. I don't, I don't want kids up there taking pictures of themselves. You know, it's a monster movie, but monster movie not even hallmark i don't want the variety i don't think you do either it's your water you don't want a blair witch project yeah <laughs> i mean you know i'm talking again about these high roller bills who put them on the map at least oh, right right which was a good thing they sold a lot of flour yeah they did. <laughs> in that poor little pizza place I, downtown I Provo. i don't want kids up there you know isn't it just a b movie or you know, something yeah, he assured me that it wouldn't be like that, but I, I just don't want to do it. And why are water tanks? What's the interest in ours? Here. Oh, somebody who lives he's, here. He says he's done it before. Done a movie at the water tanks before? He says he's filmed stuff up there before. Yeah, he told me that. I had no idea. Oh. Mm -hmm. Well, well we, as long we, as he's we not need our own cameras for our own movie that says, don't trespass. Okay. Anyway, okay. I just... I don't, I don't like the idea. That's, I didn't want to make that decision. Oh, Stephen. So is, oh, yeah. is that mm -hmm. something we need to vote on? He does a lot. We make a hundred grand. Yeah. He's an indie guy. Yeah. 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 Is, is it, is it uh, $50,000 a day? Oh, he didn't talk about paying us anything. No, he just wants oh, to use it. Because it's public way. property and that's. Yeah. yeah. I, I, well, and I'm concerned that it's not. The same as it was if he's been up there before, because we put a bunch of dirt up, we moved things, we've got new well house, and you know we've got new infrastructure. Right. Potential injury. I mean, there's just all kinds of unintended issues. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, he has to provide some sort of. If it was at the park Again. or something, that'd be different, I suppose, but not at a. It's one of those. Yeah. Are we a little town? Are we a big? You know what I mean. Your little town. Uh, Payson gets a lot of money from the film industry. Every every Hallmark show shows yeah. Payson's Main Street. 
<laughs> okay, so um, what's your recommendation to Corbett then? I think I think we've heard it, but let's yeah. give yeah, him I a think, clear mandate. No. no, unless unless circumstances change and he wants to come make a presentation to us, but no for right. now. We'll call him more Okay. All right. Uh, proposal for the dirt road leading to the water tanks, Corbett. So we've talked about. Uh, Is that this? Okay. We've, we've talked about the treatment that uses road base and slip asphalt. That's what this is. This has been in this puddle of water for three years, <clears throat> whatever. Anyways, it's a, a mixed magnesium or and other chemicals in the road base, and then water it, and it turns hard. Um, the proposal the guy gave me for the the road to the water tank is $43,000. Uh, asphalt, and that's a dollar eighty a square foot. Asphalt right now is a dollar sixty-five. And this would would look this color, and be and yet road it'd be smooth. So this uh -huh. is rough on the top only because there was other, you know. But all they did was cut cut a bunch of chunks out of a road. Is there any maintenance right. costs? Yeah, what's the, the maintenance cost? Um, they they say it holds up better than asphalt. Be interesting to know what the life expectancy is. Well, it's like I was saying before, this is a really good option <clears throat> if you're out in the two leaves, only because the asphalt has to go down hot. And you have to have enough time. It has to go down hot enough if you have enough time to roll it and compact it. And if you're out in the boondocks, then that's hard to do. Or you take an asphalt plant with you to the boondocks so that your asphalt is hot enough because you're mixing it on site. Right. We're not. So to spend as much money or more for this than you are for asphalt, just to make sense. The only thing that would change my mind is if the maintenance costs were over 10 years were substantially different. So that, you know, that's a good question. And how much traffic are you going to get on the road for this? Yeah, that's a good question. I mean, we, yeah. Well, it, yeah. Is, we've, done, we've, done, we've done it by for years with just dirt. Now it's a lot different right now because dirt is is it's been pulverized and it's dirt, not road base. Right. And so once all the construction is done, Dave Taylor's committed to me that he that he'll fix the road. He'll fix the road to the back end of his property because he doesn't want to deal with the dust. Right. He's even talked talked about asphalting the road to the back end of his property because he doesn't want to deal with the dust. Yeah. Well, I just I don't see the sense in spending more for this than we do for asphalt. Are, are, what about the, the the rumors that that he's going to require the road to be asphalted to to uh, have access to it? Well, that was so we've talked about. I mean, I think you're mixing different things. So we talked about we talked to Dave Tater about at one time about taking a parking lot up into the tree. Okay, up onto the the dirt pile where we hauled all the dirt from mitigation. In order to do that, you have to change the road designation for pedestrian access to vehicle access. Dave, one of Dave's conditions to, to change the easement on his property was asphalt the road and build a barrier between the road and the tree. Right. So that's only if you take a parking lot up in the tree. And, and that's up to you guys. So you're suggesting for for now that we spend forty three thousand and no, use this? No, 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 use don't give me I'm not saying spend forty three thousand. This is more than asphalt. Okay, but I just, if you're going to spend that kind of money, I'd rather have asphalt because it's a lot cheaper. This requires eight inches of road base. Asphalt only requires six. Um, but you're showing this to us just for as an, as an option that we could do this. It may, we don't know what the maintenance or the longevity of it is with regards to comparison between asphalt and, and this product. Do we have any examples of where we might go and look at a road made out of this product? Because I think that would be helpful. And I think that, again, most of, most of those, they're not local. I think the council would like to hear your recommendations. So. Yeah. You might want to come up with it. You might not want to give it road tonight. Base. But... Road base without this. Exactly. Okay. Good idea. So road base okay. plus asphalt or just road base? Just road base. I don't want I didn't want to spend the money on, on asphalt. Okay. Okay. You just want uh, road base to cover that spot. I just, I just don't want you to think that there's another option that we didn't talk about. 
Yeah, and, and, and she's okay. Thank you. So Taylor's talking about potential for dust control right. of putting asphalt down. Only if you're going to take a parking lot up there. A parking lot up there. But, but if we're not, he's not going to worry about the dust. He's not worried about me driving up there three times a week. What about uh, motorized vehicles going up the trail? That's up to you guys. Well, no, what's, what's Dave's I, I heard that was part of the. the the, the requirement is that if, if we were going to allow ATVs and side-by-sides, then he wanted what you said earlier. I haven't had that discussion with him, okay. so I don't, I don't know what you're talking about. Okay. And okay. I just heard it. Um, Scuttlebutt. So when are we going to, is this on the agenda later to vote on on this, or is this something we're coming back to? Yeah, this is just something that okay. Corbett wanted to give he you He just wanted us to see this dirt road, but right. to vote on on the road base will have to be at it yeah we're not making a decision he just wants to think when would you corbett when would you want us to consider this option of the road base road base versus asphalt versus this when, yeah when carrie's asking when we need to make some kind of a decision i mean so right now it's going to remain dirt and Until so, we've... but your your preference, what you just told us is your preference is the road base. So I just want to determine when we may need to actually make a decision on keeping it dirt or going to the road base. If you want to change it from dirt, let me know. Yeah, we don't know yet. You don't have any. I, I no. Just assume they do. I don't want to spend the money on asphalt. I don't want to spend the money on this. But on okay. the road and base, you were talking about. But if about. we do decide yeah, we need base, to do something. The road base back no matter what. Dave Taters, Dave Taters committed. I mean, he's the one that made the road dirt. Right. The dirt and road base aren't the same, right? Right. right. If you drive up that road now, and the reason that you get a dust cloud is because it's just talcum powder. Right. right. That talcum powder is dirt. Dirt right. from Dave, Dave's job site. So Dave's committed to, to put road base back. Okay, so it's not our expense, it's his expense. Okay, right. that, right. that added, that's okay. clarifying. Next, security at the water tanks, Corbett. Is, what is this piece of paper? We've talked talk a lot about cameras. It's before. next in my packet, and I just wonder um, what it's for. And I just want to make sure that we get some kind of security other than somebody having to walk past the cameras. So the only reason we caught the kids up there before was because Patty just happened to walk past the oh. storage closet and saw the right moment in the camera at the tank. Wow. Right. And so I just want to make sure that the security cam cameras that we're talking about have security features have proactive alerts proactive security features yes those should be those should so got to be part of it then have you been I, working on the cameras Laura? i have not but but yeah. a crew has oh, he's, he's, yeah. he's talking about this later okay. yeah but, but all cameras are good cameras at the water tank cameras alerts. here yeah yeah okay just to be clear the cameras aren't the thing that have the security it's the software that records exactly. and analyzes but the system the <laughs> should mm -hmm. alert you. and the clarity though of the system that's part of it the camera has to have i mean right but it, the bid is for full hd okay perfect high definition cameras and you're talking later about this I hope, I hope so. Okay. Yeah, much later. Okay. okay. <laughs> so then, will the software have the ability to, to identify zones, to call out, make a, a text alerts if there's motion in Mine the Mine does. Zone? Okay. So that's what we would have to arrange for yeah. with the bid. In the interest of time. Right now, we've okay. just got a recording system as part of the bid. If we choose to have proactive video analyzing, facial recognition, whatever, then that's a different that's a different piece so, of software. Wait, in the interest of time, can you guys take this discussion offline and have it and then we can talk yes. about it yeah. in a meeting again? Okay. Perfect. That would be better, I think. Because so we're, we're tabling all... both 13 and 14? Um, or... What about 14, Dave? Please, please don't table 14. Because... Okay. Yeah. Well, that's why I'm just asking um, if this is what you were taking it, this, it off. This year's budget. Yes. Okay. Please, go ahead. <laughs> well, but the concern I have is that if we're not getting what we need, that's what, what we'll we find need, out. Then let's roll it into next year's budget if that's possible and make sure we get what we need. I just, but my we, concern is that if we don't have security that's, that's proactive, that's going to call out alerts when somebody's up there, 
You don't find out until after the fact. Okay, so let's, um, are we at this point? 14, yeah, yeah. Okay. So we have a bid that involves, and by the way, this is the same bid that Val Wilding and Chris Elvey got from Ryan Erickson. Ryan Erickson's the one that we met with. He talked to us about this. So none of this should be surprising to anyone. So it involves, um, uh, yeah, I don't see it in my packet. We don't because it's been out there for forever. So it's, that, it, we but we need to. We can redistribute it again. This bid was done know, a very a long, long time, time ago. ago. In fact, a year ago. So yeah. it's still valid. So I asked Chris to check, and Ryan's willing to honor the bid. Okay. 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 Even though component costs have gone up, yep. etc. So we're talking about. Uh, 30, just over $30,000. So $30,797.04 is what we're talking about for everything that we're going to get out of this. So um, now, again, to Corbett's point, this does not involve software to analyze the video. It is just recorded. What we can do, because Ryan also does schools and commercial sites, is we can ask him how much would that kind of software be and then see if we can get it added to the bid. But what I would propose is if he even says, yes, I can do that, we should go ahead with this because that would get the hardware in place and then we can worry about the software on next year's budget. That makes sense. That's what I would propose. So can you just remind us where these cameras, and how many and where they would be located? Oh, we've talked over time about a lot of different cameras in a lot of different places. So there's two exterior cameras, three fixed dome cameras, two... But where? But where? Exterior? Right. I get that. <laughs> I, I hear what you're saying. There isn't a map. Okay. So okay. what we did there is may we said, been, we want one at the park, we want them up at the water tanks, we want one at the fire station, and we want some down at the mailbox. Okay. So he put together that bid in that very loose. Yeah, and, and framework. when we talk about where the cameras are gonna go, that needs to happen in a um, closed session. Right. Agreed. So the other thing about this bid is we did also, the finance committee did, I should say, looked at two other vendors. Um, both of those other vendors refused to give us a bid um, because they knew just because of how we I guess ask the question. We already had a bid and they don't like bidding against each other. So they, they refused to give us a bid. So we did try and open it up to other vendors. Um, but ultimately we felt like Ryan was probably the most qualified. So are, if- Are they on state contract? Um, I don't know, but I'm- We should get state are. pricing if well, they are. The only reason I said it, Geneva, Geneva Communications are the guys that contacted me. And their state contract, I mean, they, they gave me this, I got it today, they gave me a price for five cameras, or six cameras at the tanks, and everything that I've talked about, and it's like $14,000. Okay. So, what kind, what kind of cameras? What, what, what kind hey, of this, We need to get some details on that, because you should compare them. There's a difference. <laughs> well... You know, but at some point you gotta. And our, do these cameras have, use our fiber? Fourteen. Uh, so they don't. They don't use fiber at all. And is nope. that one of the reasons that we're going this route? Because I thought we were part of our fiber project was that we would utilize that fiber for the only place Security. we didn't have fiber well, was up to the wells. Know. Ryan's bid would reduce if we had fire or fiber to the tanks. Right. As an example. So, but we're not using the fiber here. When we put the cameras here, those cameras wouldn't use the fiber here or at the mailboxes or at the well, park where fiber is. I thought that was part of our whole discussion earlier. I mean, earlier last year. I'm just going by my memory. And I understand what you're saying. I hear what you're saying. Um, 
The answer is I don't know because honestly, the the portion of this bid that is the most money is the setup, meaning their work to come to the city and install the cameras, and then the cost of the actual hardware. The communications part isn't a significant expense. So honestly, I haven't really spent a lot of time on that aspect. It's just not worth spending that time. Because it's not that much. Radio communications of a 4K stream are sufficient. Basically, what they'd be doing is something like what Rise Broadband does, where they do a directed um, Wi-Fi. So I, I know there's a lot of companies that do security cameras, um, and both residential, which a lot of people in town have, and commercial, and it's not that high of an expense. It's so cheap. why why is this so much higher than what an, another business might spend? Because these aren't. What ring, makes them big? They're not better. a ring camera on your front door. Yeah, so what makes it so much better than maybe a pers a, a business? Um, help us understand why so this the, the quality is so much of, better. The quality of the camera is a lot different. Mm -hmm. The quality of the lens, <laughs> your high definition ability is significantly better. I mean, I've got a ring on my house too. And I see what that looks like on my phone. Yeah. You know, but this is not that. This is the length of recording, the way to access the recordings. I, I got to be honest with you. It might just be easier just to tell Ryan to, to stop. We, we've gone through the finance committee, went through and got three bids. They've met with multiple different companies. Uh, Ryan's holding his bid. He's been working at the city for five years on getting this. He's still holding his bids and stuff. And we keep going back and forth on this. I say we either... Get the cameras. If you don't like the fifty thousand dollars expense, that's awesome. Go to Costco, buy the six hundred dollars system, install it, and let's be done. But this is crazy to keep dragging this guy and all these other vendors through the mud. On this, this is a professional grade system that that will be able to do rec facial recognition, those kind of things, if we add it to the IBMS software. But I, I'm sorry, this has just gone on way too long. Well, and I wasn't questioning that, Chris. It was no, I'm not. I'm not. I'm just saying in general, I'm not picking on you know, anybody what, here. What makes what makes the system so so wonderful and 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 you you because we haven't really talked about them for a while. I mean, other than well, cost. But Ryan, so again, to Chris's point, and sorry for expressing a little bit of frustration, but it is frustrating to get this far where we're sitting here with a bid, all we need is an approval. Yeah. And I now just, you're asking questions way back at the beginning. Well, we haven't really talked about it this whole year. But we much. have. We had Ryan online with the entire council, and he went through <clears throat> right. the entire system. And then the finance so committee. I think we're fine. I think we're fine. I just wanted to clarify a few little things. And and again, I'm not I'm not against questions. It's just it feels like a rehash. And well, and I remember us talking about getting cameras that went with the fiber. So that's why I was asking that question because that was a real. Well, that was real discussion when we were doing fiber. So that's just, and then Corbett's uh, so, point of getting them at the water tanks, and we said, no, let's table that. So in Corbett's frustration of why we're going forward with this part, but we weren't talking about whatever he wanted, it just kind of was confusing there for a moment. Yeah, so we don't have fiber up at the water tanks. Right, oh, I know that. We have conduit, but we don't have right. the fiber. Right. So... This bid includes basically $800 for a point-to-point -point bridge. Okay. That's the directed Wi-Fi. Um, the setup and install on that is $432. So then just explain. And that gets it to the city, okay. the city center. From the city center, we use fiber. Okay. okay. But from the water tanks to here is a point-to-point -point bridge. Okay. So we just tabled the security at the water tanks, which sounded like security cameras on 13. And now at 14, we're talking about security cameras and saying that they are for the water tanks. So maybe that's part of the confusion. Well, but Corbett's talking about software and he's talking about hardware. Okay. So he's suggesting we approve the hardware now, then, then we, we move forward upgrade. on talking about the software that we can use to do what Corbett is suggesting which is probably quite valuable okay. to us. That makes a is that, difference. Yeah. Is that a true summary of what? Okay. We're good. We're good with both. Well, that, I mean, 
that, that code that you need with communications is for everything. Right. Hardware, hardware and software. So here, here's the frustration that I have um, is that we really, I mean, yeah, we, we talked about it, but how long ago was it talked about? I think that we should have a refresher on what it is that we're going to spend $30,000 on. I, don't, I think that's a, a fair question. Um, and when we throw up a $14,000 $14, versus thirty. dollars um, it would be nice to know what that is. That's only six cameras. And and I don't even know how many cameras we've got it with the uh, thirty thousand. Um, so I I just yeah. Hold on just a sec. Let so we got five, six, seven uh, cameras for the shed in the upper park. I'm presuming the shed is the water tank. Then there's one, set shed two cameras at the mailboxes. There, oh no, the water is, uh, water tower is one. So this is water tower and firehouse. So that would be the city center. You have a total of seven cameras between the water tower and the city. So now you're talking about 16 total. So, Seven, so far. eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 16 total cameras. So he's talking cameras. about a bid for 16 cameras. And okay. Are this they, is talking about and how I, many at the water tanks? So six total. Uh, six total. Are they all fixed mount or are they directional? Um, directional. PTZ. So there are some that are fixed. And then there's some that we can control and we can do the scanning the way we can today with our current camera. So, and, and I, I can, I don't, I have no clue what, what Corbett, uh, what that, the company that gave Corbett the, the bid on. Um, but, but we do know that commercial grade uh, hardware, whether it's cameras or TVs or whatever, is going to be. Forty to hundred percent more than than what commercial than residential. residential, but rightfully so. Oh, right, I'm, not, I'm right. Not, I'm just saying because it's going to last longer. I, I'm saying it as a positive. It's got a warranty the, behind it. Yeah, I'm saying it's a positive oh. as compared as as compared to the thirty thousand dollars. If if we okay. had found out about Geneva back oh. in January, yeah, I, but Corbin's would, also saying that that's for six cameras and one location. You're talking about 16 cameras throughout the city, which is. And the back halls. So that, I mean, we're getting two and two thirds times the hardware for twice the price. I know what I was suggesting is I, I would be happy to like have t contact Geneva and say, okay, let's do an apples to apples comparison on just the water tanks. I'm okay with just doing that and finding out what what are your camera capabilities and all that. It's just, again, to, to Chris's point, you know, we've gone through basically four months of this and that's just this round. Right. Chris and Val did it a year ago and we've okay. both come to the same conclusion but the rest of us haven't been in on those ind independents. So for us, I, you know, I think what Bob and I are saying is just a little refresher sometimes because we've gone through a lot of things this year and we've talked about security on a number of different levels. And so Fair just enough. So coming let's back. Schedule, so let's schedule a refresher. Well, our, no, we're, we're, I think we can even just say here, we're talking about two cameras at the water tanks or, or more. Is that is two? Uh, adequate or is this based on on Ryan's assessment or just what we've asked and what we feel is the best assessment yes it's based on Ryan's assessment that two will be enough at the water tanks well so we already have three up there but Chris correct me if I'm wrong but I think what happened was Ryan's come up here to the city mm -hmm. and we told him here's what we really want to protect okay and so we we and it was left that loose so water tanks park, park 
here. City center mailbox. And this yeah. is his recommendation. Of and this is what he came back with. Okay. That makes sense then. Because it, again, it's just putting it back into to where we're all at after a, a year of, of talking about lots of different things and security with, and you know, the COVID stuff and everything else where we were going to put cameras and not, and then we changed our minds. And so just bringing it back. And this so also this went before the, the, sorry, this also went before the finance committee and they also went out to several security companies within the state to get bids. And this was their recommendation also. Yes. All right. Well, I, I just, I just think that uh, CRISPR uh, presentation on what it is that we're spending thirty thousand dollars on would have been would have gone a long way. Yeah. Noted. And, and is it thirty? Is it thirty thousand? It seemed like it was a little bit more than that, David. What? Uh, Dave said thirty. I, I could be wrong. It's just north of thirty. It's thirty-seven. 97 so 30,800 and we do but, trust the finance committee that they've done their due diligence we trust that you know that uh, you and 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 Val Wilding and the others that have looked into it have done their due diligence it's just uh, again just bringing it back to current time yeah and, and I, I, I one of the concerns I have is I think that we have residents that really don't want cameras and in <laughs> oh. at the park or at the at the mailbox. But public space is is fair game. Well, but there are still the, 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 citizens that are saying right. they but, don't but, want them. Well, basically, the law says is as soon as you step out of your house, you have no expectation of privacy. Okay. And so, so, so the law, as I as I understand it, based upon drone footage type things, is that we, we don't have anything to worry about supporting that legally but what do I what what does the community want and and personally I think that we need to have cameras at those locations I, I'm not sure that we don't need to have a have the cameras um, on other entrances to the city I think people would be surprised at how many cameras other cities have that they just don't know about. <laughs> well, you, and you, go, you go into the big cities and they've got they them have every, every corner. And so, um, again, I, I just think that upfront presentation would have been a little bit nicer. Well, and in rebuttal, uh -huh. had I known that that was what you wanted, we could have done that. I just wanted to. I just want to know what we're spending thirty thousand dollars on. I, we, again, to me, this was just a approve the number and, okay. and move on. But if again, if if you want that, I, I, which is fair, then I just need to know that ahead of time, I, and I'll get I, a map. I guess what I'm saying is, I, I would like that kind of thing in the future. Right. Well, and I think he's saying. He thought it was provided because we've provided it. He's provided We'd already it done before, before, but it's been a while, so the refresher would have been nice. Okay. So, but but he did provide it. It's just that we didn't provide it again. So tonight, if you want to delve into Corbett's information a little bit, make sure we're apples to apples, and just give that added degree of confidence. People yeah, if asking. if you can forward that to me, Corbett, I'd be happy to. Send that to the finance committee yeah. and have and, them look at it. In, in my experience in trying to get this room set up, trying to do apple to apples comparison <laughs> is very, very, very difficult because they all have different philosophies on how the, the backbone and all those kinds of things need to look. And, and so it, it's, it's not easy to do an apples to apples. So basically, we have number six and number seven <laughs> that we're voting on tonight. Number six, we're voting to table because that's a software. Number seven, we would like to approve because that's the hardware and the basic software that Ryan has talked about. And if we want to increase, then we can vote on that another day. So that. I don't, I don't want to mislead you. I had no idea that anything about the request that Corbett made as part of the water system security. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I cannot speak one way or another to that. That's right. Okay. That's so, brand new to me. So maybe that's part of the confusion too, is, is seeing this new, something new with 
and they were both covering the same geographic space. Yeah. I, yeah. I don't know. Okay. I get it. We're good. Okay. Um, number 15, the formation of community development committee. Okay. I propose that we uh, table that the, uh, <clears throat> the, the group, <clears throat> excuse me, the group would prefer to be uh, grassroots at this time until, uh, until things mature a little bit more and they know what direction they should be going at all because it's very, very right. uh, loose right now. And so it's, it's, it's truly just exploration. Right. Okay. Thanks, Bob. Okay, 15, approval of plat A11200 South Church subdivision. Wayne? Uh, we have two 15s. This is a final plat. Two 15s. And oh. uh, it, we didn't realize the final plat had not been. Uh, recorded. So the planning commission approved that. So it's on your agenda to approve tonight the recording. Just a final plan for the stake center. Oh, it's, it actually is the stake center. Yes. Because I was going, who has this big of a lot down okay. there? <laughs> so it's a church, yeah. Okay. It's reviewed by OEI and the church. And okay. So we just. Uh, and everybody signed it but us? Uh, yes. Okay. Yes. Then we're good. Yeah. Any questions or concerns on that? Nope. Okay. And uh, the deputy is still Thomas. here. Woohoo! <laughs> <laughs> it's only a little after 10. I went home at 9 o'clock. <laughs> 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 Yes. Oh, yeah. Up here. I, I, I up here. There we need to hear you. Sorry. Um, the biggest thing last month was the vehicle birds. Uh, they do have a suspect for that. Good. They still need to, and that was pulled off. I can't really can't talk too much about it, but probably. Um, I think he was picked up a few days after. They're not 100% sure, but the likelihood is, is there. Uh, other than that, a few parking problems. We had a death investigation up here. Um, and then, a, uh, for the most part, it's been dogs running at large. A lot of, a lot of animal problems with uh, people not keeping their dogs in the yard. Uh, I, I sold a speed trailer. I don't know if you noticed that. Uh, it is down at the Elk Ridge shop, so I can get that program. So we can start yeah, talking. I, I like kind of doing analysis. This is what uh, what I talked to the deputy about some time ago, and just trying to get the hardware to be able to make it happen. But I'd like to do a task, a seven day task, with the um, <clears throat> with the gates functioning, and see what the what the speeds are, and 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 kind of get a, a, some idea of of what kind of traffic there is, and 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 I think that they can capture a lot of data that that they can give us a summary of. And then I'd like to do a seven-day period where the gates are not functioning. And then we could do a comparison between the two and see what the speeds are, what the traffic numbers are, and, and all of those kinds of things, and, uh, and, and have some data to help make some decisions on. And I don't know if we're past that point of doing that at this point or not, but uh, to me it would make a lot of sense and, and give me a lot of comfort in in the, the, the decisions that we would make. Because right now we've got anecdotal information about how much it, it impacts it. And um, I, I think I heard from someone that's, uh, that's trained in, in uh, recognizing speeds, like an officer or something like that, uh, that, that, that they thought that, uh, that the speeds weren't as high as, as the anecdotal information was. 
So I'd like to validate it. Yeah, that's a good idea because we can't make decisions just based on the antidote of I was walking by and I think they were going 60. It's 25 sometimes when you're standing on the side of the road feels like it's, or if you're going right. around a corner. <laughs> and, I have, and it's easy for me. So like when I'm running radar and stuff, I can see a car coming down. I was like, okay, he's home. And I look at the radar. Yeah. Um, yeah. The speed trailer is great. I still think that you should do it even if you don't do the, yeah. do the gates. Because um, I've, I've asked and I've called around and tried to find out data on what, what what the crime rates are with with a gated community versus a non-gated community, whether it's a uh, keyed access or just a uh, drive-through, uh, like like we're proposing here. Um, I, I don't know how effective that is. And how do we put into play on security when they have their own hired security as well, besides our sheriff? Uh, deputy, um, I mean, so they have double security right now over there. Yeah. And does that play a, a role in it? And, and I don't know what their future plans are for that security person. I, I don't know. But um, I, I think that they deserve uh, to have some data s to support them. And we and we as a council need to have data to, to give us guidance on what we should be doing. Mm -hmm. I, I agree. Um, Deputy, one thing that I've been getting a lot of calls about lately is with regards to fire. A lot of people, of course, are having a little P PTSD about fire. We have residents on the other side uh, by, you know, off of Oak in those cul-de-sacs where people will come up to look at the lights of the city and make a little bonfire to keep warm or roast some marshmallows or like this last weekend up the switchback trail, I know that there were some citizens who were concerned about the fire pit up at the top of the switchbacks. They tend to put it on Facebook first and then call, call us. And I'm trying to train them that if there's a fire or a threat of a fire, it's okay to call you. And to call you immediately, they don't need to say, what do you think? Uh, and ask the neighbors if it's a problem that Fire is a significant enough danger for us that we would rather you investigate it first. A lot of that is people that they don't want to be a burden, and it's not a burden at all. It's referred to that than chase a dog. Or, or we, not that, but or a cat. We prefer to go up and hurry and get the fire out before spending yeah, weeks, weeks up here. Right. Return to do evacuation. So just so it's on the public re record, everyone, the deputy says it is not a burden to call him no, when you are concerned he, about fire, fire safety. Fire particular. Call me, you can call me anytime I'm but... Yeah, but they can call dispatch. <laughs> it's okay to call dispatch and say so, we have yes. we have a concern with fire. Okay. Um, yes, 911 is that number. <laughs> We've got to put the next week start on that stuff and then I started doing a proposal and typing it up for community watch. I'm still gonna figure out how we can invite the city up and zones and yeah. stuff that that'll be and we can talk about that at our meeting because that's part of emergency management. Um, we appreciate you and we uh I know I enjoy seeing your seeing your car. Yeah. I have uh, been working to try. We have like some more cars sitting down at the office right now because they're so short on deputies. And just try to see if there's someone out there. Yeah. Probably. Okay, well. <laughs> but, um, and, and we found that um, we had a deputy that was great that was up here all the time. We saw them. And then the next deputy we had worked a lot of night shifts. We didn't see them much. But we saw a lot of the petty problems really dramatically decrease. So night shifts are great. Yeah. Even though the citizens may not see your car as much, we see a lot less yeah. just petty. Yeah, it, they just like to shift. see you I in town. It's, it's different in different cities. Some like Cedar Port, they just want to see on the road and see you in town. Some have problems at night, so I tend towards the highway. It's just it's wherever I'm needed. So nights work really well for us because that's when the mischief tends to happen yeah. here. We're, we're attracting users. 
See the lights, and see the we'll fireworks. See people, well, some people like to come up and see the lights and they're not causing problems, but then you have other people that are. So anyway, okay. All right, we, I'm sorry. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Yes. We really have to move on. We will be in touch. And did you, were you involved at all in our exciting rave experience last week? I, I didn't follow up on that. I've heard that there were permits for it, but I've also heard there weren't permits. I don't so think there was. I'm trying to figure out how you can make all something right where they did do all the trash and stakes in there. Yeah. Yeah. And posted video online. Of, so that was a little unnerving. I, I heard that they were going to do another Far enough away, but when the one such a, the, an issue with these big parties around the county right now, a lot of them are actually jumping through the hoops, right? Like, right. permits and everything like that. I haven't heard for sure. But the deputies that were there, they said that everything was okay, obviously. Something it gets out big. of hand very quickly. So something that big, you're going to get a lot of trash. Right, and it was. Well, it was and, and, and they have said that that's one of the reasons they have a large property, because they want to have these large parties. And yet, when it goes from 1,000 people to 3,000 people well, and all of the other mischief, and they that just makes can't, it They difficult. just can't post on social media. Well, and on I'm TikTok, gonna... that private property is available for people to. Yeah, and, and, and I think there should be a requirement that they, could, they have to have uh, police officers. And they, they have to do security. Uh, the county building or the county permit permits require that they have security. Okay. Like Parking and bathrooms, and and bathrooms and all part, of those things. Part of the um, complication of this is that the infraction basically was happening on, or, or the party, the event was happening on county property. But the big infraction was happening in our city. Yeah, I think like the, the trespassing. On the I, I think if there's any feedback, you, if you're going to have that big of a party, you got to have parking for it. Yes, and it yeah. cannot be the stakes center. Yeah, that's not theirs. It's not the stakes. Yeah. 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 Anyway, I'm sure you either that or a shuttle service. <laughs> and the sh and the church might have to start putting some of those. I know things Fair across the. From what it sounds the, like they were parked up and down. Oh, it they was, were I, everywhere. I, I, oh, yeah. I tried to drive up Summit Creek, and that road's so narrow. Anyway, they had cars on both sides, so there was no way two cars could have passed. So Plus, it, there were cars on both sides. I heard that the area. estimate was oh, was close to three thousand yeah, people. Yeah, I think they were saying uh, four. The, the, the profit amount was probably too much. Ten bucks a head, and they made forty thousand. Maybe that's the kind of party we need to have. <laughs> we need building up our budget. Official city parties. We're used to those out in the desert and stuff. Right. right. On the other side of the lake. Okay. Thank you. Thanks. All right. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. We appreciate being here tonight. Corbett, Public Works. Um, if, okay. Okay. Let's. Just move on from there. Thank you. Um, city council assignments. Um, I would recommend at this point, if somebody's got something important to report, let's do it. Otherwise, let's table and move on. Does um, anybody have anything they really want to cover? A couple of things. Yes. Um, one is, is that uh, we would like the, the trails uh, committee and that would like to get approval to go off and purchase the uh, installation of the uh, split rail banks. Oh, yeah. Doral? Uh, just one thing quickly. We're going to patrol. Wait, he, he's talking about the split rail fence. It's okay. He, the part, Because you're kind of over parks and trails. And, and Bob's saying that they want a permission to go ahead and purchase those materials to do that. Oh, you do? Yes. I, I like the thing you sent us, so that was mm -hmm. good. They, uh, I asked them if they had a shortfall in money and they said no. So there'll be no additional funds going to the city. And, so uh, or is that 